Having a fantastic evening, a fantastic pre noon, a fantastic afternoon, no matter where you are in the world. I'm a song piker. And this is Austin awesome. Abarquez coming to you live from sunny Sydney, Australia. That's right. Last day in Sydney, Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, and MBs, I hope all of you are having a fantastic one because today is a beautiful day. Today's a wonderful day. Today is yet another day. I'm doing drugs. This is, this is, you guys get to see my, my, my methods here. Um, I'm live and alive and I hope everyone's having a fantastic one. I'm taking creatine pills. And that's what I'm doing currently. I'm taking creatine pills that I brought to Australia. Did the Aussie boys have creatine? I don't know, but I didn't want to risk it. <sighs> anyway, um, I'm taking creatine pills and also like, uh, like, what is it? Fucking taurine and, and ashwagandha and magnesium, shit like that. Anyway, uh, and fish oil pills. I also don't have my glasses on, so I can't see shit right now. But anyway, this is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news, about what's going on in the world of Asana, Asana Abbey Piker. And honestly, I didn't want to stream today because I'm traveling and also because I felt kind of bummed. But then I realized, like, I'll hate myself if I don't stream because I don't have a good brain. I have a bad brain. Um, and also, I had already prepared, like, 
what I wanted to talk about and shit. So it's gone to waste. And if I, I feel like if I don't do this, if I don't stream, then I annoy people in my vicinity because I constantly fucking chirp at them. Ugh. Yeah. What's creatine? It does, yeah. It puts on, it, it like makes your muscles retain water. So it makes your, it also helps with your recovery, I think. It's pretty good. It's it's in red meat, naturally. If you eat beef, you get a decent amount of it. I don't really eat that much beef, though. Um. Anyway, where was I? Uh, you'll come to Watson and Matilda with me, everybody. Um, uh, this is the last day that I, I'm spending in, in Sydney before we move on to Melbourne. Did I sleep well? Um, I guess. I mean, I went to sleep at like 10 p.m. Two nights in a row. I went to sleep at 10 p.m. Uh, this Today, I, I woke up at 4.30 a.m. To get ready. Did you get a sunburn? I think I did. I feel like I did. Did I get a sunburn? No. I don't think I got a sunburn, but I got like a little bit browner for sure. Please read. We love the fun stuff too. We promise you're still here. I just had to watch the vlog because of time difference. I'm European. What? Okay. Oh my God. I should have never fucking said anything. Jesus Christ. Now people are going to be so goddamn annoying about that too. Um... You say Melbourne correctly. I'm proud of you, Melbourne. Yeah. You got it, baby. I still have to pack, by the way. Obviously, I have a whole bunch of stuff that I have to pack uh, here. But, <sighs> but yeah, yesterday, I ended the broadcast. We shot a podcast. We came over here. I had literally, and I'm still thinking about this, the greatest bomb me of all time. Um, I... I'm not joking when I say this is the greatest bon me. I'm pretty sure. I've never even had other bon me. But I'm like, I can't think of the last time I had bon me. I'm sure I've had it. I know exactly what it is. I know what it's supposed to taste like. So I must have had it, but I don't remember it being memorable. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. But. This fucking bomb me I had yesterday, I don't know if it is because I'm so hungry at the time. I don't know if it's because I was like, it was after a long day. We had done a lot. You know, we walked around a lot. And then I fucking got in the water and the water gets you like really, you know, it just like whips you around and then you're tired and you're hungry. I had been fasting all day. I fucking slammed two of these bad boys back to back. Do you understand what I am saying to you? I fasted the whole day, and then I slammed two fucking bon me's back to back. Alexa was like, you have to get the classic. Alex was like, the crispy pork is better. So I was at an impasse, and I thought to myself, why not both? I'm a big boy. I can fucking take it. So I slammed it. And when I say I slammed it, I mean like my manager, David, he was also eating the sandwich. We got it for every single person. By the time he finished one full sandwich, I had fucking inhaled two of them. <laughs> when I find out what the name of the place is, I'll tell you guys it. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah, crispy pork was fire, but I think the classic one was a little bit better. My lord, this was this was a delight. Okay. A lot of the food that we've had so far has been very good. We had like Lebanese chicken and and the chicken chips are incredible. The chicken crisps. The chicken crisps are incredible. Australia's been good so far. It's been good to me. It's also, I will admit, very America in some ways and kind of fucking boring in others, especially if you're not like, if you don't fuck with nature too much. Um, 
Like it's it's so America in in the ways of in the in the worst kinds of ways that like you guys are used to. For example, number one, internet dog shit. Okay, internet is absolutely dog water. So bad. There's like three ISPs, two ISPs. They all suck. <laughs> okay, just. <clears throat> just really bad, right? So that's like very America. Number two, um, obviously, indigenous genocide. Genocide of the indigenous population. Should have said that as number one, actually. Now that I think about it, it's probably a little bit more severe than the bad ISBs. It does feel like a genocide when my, when my internet service providers fuck me over, but that's like, you know, it's neither here nor there. So... Other things, there's other things that I've noticed. You get fucking robocalls here. It's like you're not. That's that. I thought that was like an America thing. Like I thought that was like only in the United States of America do do our does our government just like not give a shit at all about your privacy and like will leak your phone number to every single person. So you get like a shit ton of phone calls. Turns out. Nope, Australia does that shit too. No protection whatsoever, baby. No protection whatsoever. So that was very cool. Like seeing that, seeing that feels great. This setup makes you look small, my guy. Thank you. That's actually sick. That's like a very nice thing you could tell. That's a very nice thing you could say to me. That's the nicest thing you could say to me. Can you increase your volume? Um, yeah, is it not high enough? Um, what will you be covering the pizzeria eat the drama Burlington Vermont is up in arms uh, I do not know what this is pizzeria pizzeria okay here I, I increased I cranked up the volume a little bit is it better The government has a website you can register for a no call list and collect a fine if anyone cold calls. Oh, I didn't know that. Alex, did you know that? Your government has a website that you can register for a no call list and they collect a fine if anyone cold calls you. He doesn't think it works, Chatter. But if you guys watch the podcast, he doesn't know how many things work. <laughs> like, well, I guess, or they know. <laughs> they know how they how things work too good. Um, but yeah, by the way, shot the podcast yesterday. It was awesome. I hope you guys appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoy it. I thought it was like, I, at first I didn't want to do politics on the podcast. And because it's like, we don't do that. It's like drama and like fun and bullshit, whatever. And then I was like, fuck it. Like, I'm just going to go in. We're going to do it anyway. Um. Y'all, all y'all talked about on the free one was the dog dick. <laughs> we did talk about dog dick, literally. Um, the dog dick one. It's a great story because it's like they're making fun of him for not knowing how to eat dog yeah, dick. Like, it's that. hilarious. Um, anyway... Oh, uh, another way that Australia is very similar to America is your stupid ass lack of protection here in Australia uh, with respect to like online ads. I have never encountered an online ad experience as bad as America outside of America before. Shouts out to Australia. Try to go on any website on your fucking mobile phone in Australia and like the phone basically yells at you. The phone's like, why aren't you clicking the ads that I'm serving you? The phone will just brick. It's very strange. But bro, I literally was like, I was trying to like read a Time Out magazine article. 100 things to do in Melbourne. Let me tell you, by the way, nothing to do in fucking Melbourne. Holy shit. Um, but 100 things to do in Melbourne, right? I'm trying to read a Time Out article. It's like trying to sign me into Salesforce. I'm like, how did this, we move past the ad. Like, like 
the ad that was served to me was a Salesforce ad, and now I'm part of Salesforce, and now it's like, hello, log into your Salesforce account, dumbass. Like, you work here now. That's how, that's how they work. In Australia, that's how the ads work. The ads don't even, <laughs> they jump at you like fucking flying spiders, okay? Very strange. Very strange that, like, uh, they just serve it to you straight up. No respect whatsoever. Um, no care or consideration for your, your experience, your user experience, your consumer experience. None of that. So, respect Australia for being very, uh, very America-like. Anyway, there's a SF job opening in a company. You want to put in a good word for you? No, I'm good. Thank you. No lube adverts. Welcome to Australia. Tell Alexa, Australia just introduced its first ever fuel efficiency rules. They're pretty good, but also they wanted them down because of lobbying and included a measure to incentivize huge SUVs following USA's mistakes. I'm from Baltimore. Talk about the bridge newsboy. Shut the fuck up. Don't ever come at me with some newsboy shit. Okay? I know you're being cute, but I'm a, don't get testy with me. I will fucking uh, ban you. I saw the photo of Diddy in the in the terminal. I saw the video of Diddy pacing in the terminal. Um, thanks for the good work you do, bro. Enjoy your vacation. There is no vacation to be enjoyed. This is like, this is work, okay? Bless you. Where are you? Oh, you're in, oh, you're in my room. Oh, dude, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for taking over your space. I have completely Israeled. I literally Israeled uh, Alexa's room so fucking hard. It's not even funny. It's just like I I have the AC on in there. I'm changing things in there. You know what I mean? Like I I changed the art in his room. Like I literally, it's like I came in. I burned the olive trees down and I put. I started fucking putting pine trees in because I was like, it's more European that way. Straight up. Ben Hassan Netanabi, yeah. But I think, honestly, in my situation, with our relationship, it's, it's not even Israel, it's just I Ottomaned him, you know what I mean? He's like, young young Serbian boy gets broken by, by Ottoman colonizer, Ottoman Padishah, you know? Took over the space. That's what happened. Oh, wait, let's see. Oh, my God, bro, this place is so fast. The breakfast sandwich plays. They're literally. What? Yeah, bro. I, of course. I order. I have to. I have to do something every morning. Are you guys vaping at like 7 a.m.? That's. Bro, you got a. Bro. You have an issue. No. I don't start until like a little bit later. I try to. I try to hold it. You know, if it was, you need, it's crazy. Ay, ay, ay. They have an issue here. You got 10 things is in. I have an issue too, but it's because I don't have a, I don't have a problem. I have a solution. Okay. That's what I got. Shut the fuck up, chat. Um, anyway, my, I own, I don't have that many shorts, by the way. So today we're going to go get a fucking, uh, tradie board shorts, but that's not on stream. I'm going to, I'm going to do that off stream. We're going to hopefully, unless we can get it in Melbourne, but it's too hipster in Melbourne, right? They don't have tradies. In. Okay. They don't have tradies in Melbourne. I hear they're all, they're all, you know, they're all too busy doing art or something and talking about. See, I know the inside memes. They're all too busy talking about how much better they are than Sydney. That's what they do. Yeah. I, oh, you mean your roommate? Your, your roommate, Alex? 
Uh, that's, I don't even know if you guys can hear them because of the noise gate. Um, tradey, a tradesman, a handyman. Yeah. What? No, the CFMEU is strong as fucking Melbourne. Bro. Bro, I'm joking. I'm, they took it seriously as hell, dude. Can you take a picture in the shorts when you get them? Yeah, I have to get the shorts now because I I only brought two shorts and one of them got cooked in the in the ocean. So, dude, I left it outside to get it to have it dry yesterday, and I got so scared because I couldn't go out and grab it. I had to get Alexa to go out and grab it because it was at nighttime and it was wet, and I was so fucking scared that like a spider was gonna jump at me. See, this is what I mean. He's explaining how there was a spider web right between the chair and the fence. And it's like, okay, well, that's good that I did not go out then. I was, I was right in my assessment. I did not want to come waltzing a Matilda with anybody. You know what I mean? I did not. I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm going to keep the uh, noise gate on, I think, right? Is this like people walking in and out? Um. Spider straw? Dude, you guys don't understand. Every every part of this fucking country is filled to the brim with spiders. Okay? There are literally spiders in every corner. There are spiders everywhere for, for those with eyes to see. Okay? No, no cathedrals. Just spiders. So, uh, honestly, it's a really terrifying experience. Especially, like, I am not a particularly arachnophobic person. Okay, like I've never, yeah, there are spiders everywhere for those with eyes to see is right. Okay, listen, I'm not a particularly arachnophobic person until I came to Australia when I realized like shit is not sweet out here. What do I mean by this? In America, when you see a spider, it's like maximum this big, right? And that's like, oh, scary, fine, but like I can fuck it up. You know what I mean? I can just like hit that spider with the elbow, people's elbow. You know what I mean? Boom. Like I can deal I can deal with a spider in America by fucking that shit up. I can just like one, two. You know what I mean? But the thing is in Australia, a spider that size, first of all, the smaller it is, the scarier it might be because apparently those are the fucking poisonous ones. Uh, I have a noise gate. You guys can you guys can uh shoot the shit, whatever. I have a noise gate and no you know. There's a lot of people walking around in the house. I feel very rude. I'm just being rude to to my um my housemates, but anyway. So let me let me fix this real quick. Anyway, um so oh there's um there's there are four sandwiches by the way. Are you leaving right now? Okay. Then I got a shit ton of coffee too for whoever wants it. No, they're not poisonous, dude. No, seriously, this is what I was going to say. They told me that like small spiders are also kind of scary in a different way because some of them are poisonous. But that's still fine because I could fuck up a small spider. Like, if I can smack it and kill it easy, that's fine. But here in Australia, is a whole different ball game of spiders, okay? We went from like, that's the biggest spider you'll ever see in America, to like, oh, that's just a baby spider. Like, let that exist so we can become a daddy spider at some point. Spiders are like this big out here, bro. It's not fucking chill. It ain't sweet. I mean, it's great. There's like a massive spider web up here, right, on the wall. And like, they eat the dragonflies. They eat the mosquitoes. They're sick. However... However, they are like little fucking pets in here, okay? And that fucking freaks me out. Like, they threw a huntsman spider at me, and they said the huntsman spider was actually a baby, right? They were like, oh, it's a too small of a spider. And I was like, too small of a spider? It was like, this big. Was like, this big. Like, what do you mean it's too small of a spider? And, like, 
the point is, if I can fuck the spider up, if I can like hit it and I feel the crunch, then it's kind of scary to me. Does that make sense? Like if I if I punch it and it's got like weight to it, it punches me back. You know what I mean? Then it's like I'm a little disturbed. I don't like that. If that makes sense. Because, like, I never really thought I had, like, arachnophobia. I was like, spiders ain't shit. Whatever. It's, like, this big. I'll fuck it up. I'll swat it away. Um. So, yeah, that's... Uh, now I feel a little differently about spiders in Australia. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> They're fucking crazy. Those are why they're actually animals. <laughs> you see the best Jets player with Aiden Ross saying some dumb shit? It's gonna sound, of course. Oh, and because he's black. Oh, no, oh, guys, guys. Goodness. A Jew sold it to me because I'm Jewish. Wow. Yeah. I'm Straight up, I'm being no, honest. No, no, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. Like, no funny weird shit. Y'all run the world. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> dude, what the fuck? You have to punch them? They have a right to exist too? Uh, Sauce is not the best Jets player. He plays too much Fortnite, to be honest. Yeah, that's funny. I just... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, run, they, bro, they got so much motion throughout the whole world. Really? Oh my goodness, bro. Bro, got Bro, the thing is, like, he's not trying to be fucking rude or nothing. Like, he thinks he's not trying to be, like, edgy. It's, like, very obvious. He's trying to be like, no, you guys have done well. It's like, um, it's like Jay-Z talking about fucking, uh, what's the meme? It's like, yeah, Jewish people taught me, like, a really important secret. It's called owning real estate. <laughs> like... It's not like, uh, it's not serious. It's not that serious. Um, I think. I love sauce, to be honest. So this makes me sad. Detroit boy, Detroit dumbass. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's. I thought he thought he was like giving props to the Jewish community. <laughs> it's like, y'all, y'all got motion. You did so well. Gotta see the y'all gotta see how they be walking in the airport. Oh, there's a difference between Jay Z and Jay Electronica. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. That's that's such a good take. Exactly. It's a there's there's degrees to this. The one it's shit bad. on the, on the side of their head, that motherfucker that stuck, <laughs> it don't fall off. No, no, I know this is gonna sound, of course. Oh, and because he's black. Oh, no, oh, guys, guys. I'm having a bad fucking day, bro. Look at this. This is my second merch that I've destroyed out here, by the way. I just uh, slowly, but I'm just cooking all my merchandise out here. What the fuck, dude? That shit nutted on me. Oh, my God. Do I have a laundry pen? No. What the hell is a... No, I don't have a laundry pen. Put it in the... Put the bib on already. This is two in a fucking row, man. This sucks. Your audio is cutting off. He's cutting out? What do you mean? Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, bring the destroyed merch back to the shop. No, it's not. No, he's getting just strong. Yeah, that's what I thought. You come a waltzing Matilda with me. Waltzing Matilda, waltzing Matilda. Can you please translate? What the fuck is this? I'm blocked by this person, so I can't tell you what it says. Oh, let's see. I know a Turkish politician ain't posting cuck AI. Öztür Kilmaz. Gelip hepinizi kovacağız. Buna and olsun. Göçmenleri şirin göstermek için bir rezilliği yapan şerefsizler bizden değildir. Kızlarımıza sahip çıkalım. Um, we're gonna come and we're gonna kick all of you out. Let that be my promise. Bu adam otuya mı gitmiş ya? Vay amana koyayım. E, tipe bak. İnanılmaz. Göçmenleri şirin göstermek için bir rezilliği yapan şerefsizler bizden değildir. Kızlarımıza sahip çıkalım. Um, 
I think this guy thinks that like someone th that this isn't AI, but like someone actually posted this to make like immigrants look cute. Um. I find it very strange. What's up, Will Neff? Thank you for the five tier one gifted subs, bud. Allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Fucking hell. I miss you. Dude, you would have... I don't think you would have had a lot of fun out here. I'll be honest with you. Like, I... I... Oh, mic went out. It got disconnected. I said, Will, uh, I don't think you would have a lot of fun out here. I did in Austin, I know. I'm I'm crazy. It's like uh there's a lot of nature stuff. Like if you like nature, I feel like Australia is great. But if you're not like fucking with nature, if you're not a are y'all fucking with nature type person? You're not going to enjoy it that much. Um, I think. I mean, I, I'm having a great time because the food is great. And to see the friends and stuff. But, um, but overall, it's like... Like the appealing things in... Uh, the appealing things about Australia are like definitely all the nature stuff. Um... Will no, loves nature, though. He loves Survivor. No, he loves watching Survivor. He doesn't like surviving, I don't think. <laughs> but, yeah. Food first, friends second was kind of real. <laughs> um... Yesterday's stream was fire, though. Yeah, I mean, listen, I tackled my fears. I did that damn thing, okay? Make no mistake. I fucking went in the ocean, and I touched... I touched the birds, dude. I did it. I touched the grass. I touched it. Oh, I have to pee so fucking bad. Okay, I'm gonna blast off real quick. We didn't even blast off yet, you know? I've been doing crazy. I've been doing, I've been slow. I'm um, running the three minute ad break first at the top of the hour. Sydney, not loth. Um, yeah, I haven't tested the, those waters yet because honestly, how would I be able to test those fucking waters? <clears throat> Hold on. It's only been like a Monday and Tuesday so far. Dude, I have to pee so bad. Actually, I'm not even kidding. Okay, I'm just going to play this video for so, you guys uh, to I watch. Can't do Zoe, so while I go my pee. Only option is, um, Tyler, would you like to go on a date with me? Are you asking for real? Yeah. Don't do that. What you mean? Why not? Don't would you like do that. I'm serious. Whenever you get some free time, would you like to go on a date with me? You can't do that. On a whole live thing. Why not? It's it's true for there. Yeah. Um. But we friends though. You right. Yeah, we friends. You right. <laughs> All right. Uh, next one. So um, I can't do Zoe. So my only option is um. <laughs> Tyler, would you like to go on a date with me? Are you asking for real? Yeah. Don't do that. What you mean? Why not? Don't like, do that. I'm serious. Whenever you get some free time, would you like to go on a date with me? You can't do that. On a whole live thing. Why not? It's, it's true for there. Yeah. Um, but we friends, though. You right. Yeah, we friends. You right. <laughs> All right, uh, next one. So, um, I can't do Zoe, so my only option is, um, 
Tyler? Yeah, you need to rewatch it and you need to watch it over and over and over again. Okay, you need to understand. Make me water. Would you like to go on a date with me? Are you asking for real? Yeah. Don't do that. What you mean? Why not? Don't Would you like do that. I'm serious. Yeah. Sorry, Kai. She's too busy. She's too busy hanging out with the Democratic Party. That's right. Tyler admits she had no idea who Nancy Pelosi was when they took a pic at the Grammys party. She was like, hold my hand, hold my hand. It was cute, Tyler said. Tyler is being real. She had no clue who Nancy Pelosi was when they snapped a picture. In a new interview with People, the South African star shared the backstory behind the photo. She snapped with former House Speaker at the Clive Davis pre-Grammy uh, Gala last month. I had no idea, she told the outlet. I don't know who she was, honestly. But I think she may have known me because she has to take a picture with me. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> and what's it, two baddies? <laughs> That's right. Tyla, make me water. Nancy Pelosi makes me water, politically speaking, okay? I had no idea, she told the outlet. I didn't know who she was. Oh, this breakfast sandwich, if you want. And and cold brew. Yeah, I will. I I've invaded you guys' space, so I feel like I gotta give something in return. I was like, okay, cool. Tyler recounted. She held my hand, and I was like, are you sure we should hold hands? Because I didn't know. I was kind of feeling a bit tight, but she was like, hold my hand, hold my hand. It was cute. That's such an old person move, by the way. Like I feel like this right here. Like, going up to, like, a random, however old Tyla is, you know, like, a random person that you don't know, that's, like, like a random young person. Two things old people love doing. Smelling young people, okay? Like, which is a very strange thing that you do. I feel like there's a certain age that you pass where you're like, I'm just going to smell young people. And it's, it's very weird, but, you know, you're old. And then the other thing is, like, gripping Cause like, look at this. Like, why are you holding her hand, Nancy? Fuck are you doing? They're absorbing the youth essence through their senses. Like, it's just such a funny thing. Uh, Lex, have you ever seen this? Do you know who Tyla is? No, you don't know anything. You know, yeah, you, of course you know who Tyla is. The make me water girl. Like she's like, she's like popping on TikTok. Yeah, she's a South African actress. I mean, a, a musician. She's beautiful. And she has a very famous song that blew up on TikTok. Here she is with Nancy Pelosi, our girl. Just two sex machines, dude. Two icons. It's just so weird. Anyway. No, I don't listen to any music either. Well he, well, he actually listens to music. Alex actually listens to music, but like his music he listens to is weirder than my music. Yeah, yeah I... I don't... I, I know like a little bit about music. He only listens to like weird Serbian turbo folk. I listen... At least I listen to like Cholima on the wing, which is like impressive. It's so much better. Shalima on the Wing is like objectively one of the better songs out there. Dude, I listen to music so much. My average is around 5K minutes a week. I don't even know if that's a lot or not. Anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that like, yes, uh, Kai Sinat fumbled a baddie because honestly, that baddie was taken by Nancy Pelosi, who is another baddie. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Sometimes you just got to fucking swing and miss and it's all good. You listen to my music, which puts you in a small number of elite music enjoyers. I agree. Oh, thank you. Flying to Australia to meet Australian wildlife with I did the thing in Boy Boy, by the way. Sin F 70,000 views already, 14 hours. I cannot believe Should how much work Austin Ox put into this. If you don't go and watch it and don't go and subscribe to this fucking channel, I don't know what to tell you. He posted that shit so goddamn quick, dude. It was awesome. Oh, did I forget to blast off? 
Oh, I did. Hold up. Let me blast off real quick. Or did I blast off or did I not? Make me wanna. Uh, uh, uh, uh. Is your are we on the same plane? <laughs> okay, good. All right. I'm live day three from Australia. Covering the news, talking Baltimore Bridge and P. Diddler raids and more. Get in now. Hassan Abbey. Are you going to do any upside down politics? I mean, I kind of do want to go to this fucking like Marxist convention. Apparently it's like a trot convention. I think it would be memes to like, but, but I, I do worry about like coming across like anti-communist, you know what I mean? Like, apparently there's a Marxist convention, and I'm sure there will be, like, fans of mine there, too, for sure. But it's, like, it seems a little culty. And it's, like, a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. Because, like, I don't want to make too much fun of them. Like, I don't want to make jokes. Uh, in a lot of instances, like, inside jokes that you make turn into outside jokes and are, like, used in an anti-communist manner, I guess. So I don't... I don't know. I don't know how to like, I don't know how to describe it. Like I want to, it's kind of like this. Okay. Disco Elysium. Disco Elysium is popping the fuck off again on Twitter for some weird reason. And it's like all the right wing freaks figured out that Disco Elysium is a fun game, but they of course looked at Disco Elysium and now are saying it's objectively an anti-communist game. And I'm like, you're a fucking idiot. Like it's made by communists. And the jokes are in-group jokes, okay? It's not supposed to be for you, you dumb fucking reactionary, stupid, European fascist fuck. You, it's not for you, okay? I hate you. You do not appreciate art. You don't know anything. You have no understanding of fucking subtext. You are a dumb baboon. You do not deserve this fucking game, which is why sometimes I have a hard time making jokes about communists in general because I know some motherfuckers are going to take it like seriously and take it to the next degree. Which is why I don't know if I can go to the trot convention and just make fun of them and make memes about that without it becoming like a thing where people are like, well, this guy's a reactionary, you know? <sighs> Alexa, you never played Disco Elysium, did you? Oh, yeah. oh you did. Okay. It's, it's so good. It's so fucking good. Yeah, it's just, it's just very well written overall. Laptop sticker update. Opinions. Step on the student communists. Of course not. The people who actually call themselves liberals are mouth-foaming reactionaries. Echo maker. Basically indistinguishable from fascists. You need an x-ray machine to tell the difference. So this is like an actually correct take for the record. Like this is making fun of uh, the, the, uh, this type of person. However, however, the issue is People took this and I think like they quote retweeted it. People quote retweeted this and were like, oh, you don't get it. it this actually is like, like this guy is a five eye sticker, bro. That is fashioned in the form of five guys. Where do you even find that? Like, where do you even find that? He's a Slava Ukraini. T Dude, come, come look at this fucking sticker, please. I'm lo like, look at this dude's laptop. I'm losing my mind. He's got the NATO OTAN sticker. He's got the neoliberal sticker. He's got the Slavo Ukraini sticker. He's got the U.S. Department of Defense sticker. And then he has the Five Eyes one. Sigint and Fries. Like, so, 
No, it's like five, five guys, guys burgers and fries. Oh, five eyes. <laughs> it is five eyes. Don't say that's cool. Oh. <laughs> it's just like it how do you even arrive at these stickers, man? <laughs> Why? I think it's it's lame because the person with these stickers definitely doesn't work at these institutions. Like, no, they don't. They want to. They want to work. They want to work at these institutions. Is is thank you. That's the lamest part about this shit. That's the lamest part about it is that these motherfuckers are like Disco Elysium satirizes an own ideology and a self-aware over-the-top uh, curvature of its stereotypes. Twitter, man, they really hate communists, huh? Exactly. Those same characters disavow crop rotation as anti-communist and alienate any potential allies due to a purity spiral. This game is making fun of you. I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to lose my mind. You can, we do not deserve, let me tell you something. We just don't deserve, we don't deserve art at all. We can't have it. Or maybe we just keep consuming it and then who gives a shit that these dumbasses like don't get the point and literally are are just like avoiding the point harder and don't fucking understand it. Oh, it makes me so mad. It makes me so mad that these guys behave like this. Conservatives on high levels of cultural appropriation. That person's a notorious moron. Yeah, that person is famously the same guy who thinks like I enslaved my mom because she makes me food at my house. I will never forget that one. What a what a perfect demonstration of how much of a fucking sad life you lived and looking at a mom like living with their son and cooking them meals and going, he's enslaving his mother. Yeah, it's just tell me you have a bad relationship with your mom without telling me you have a bad relationship with your mom. You know what I mean? It's just fucking sucks. But I just, you know, overall, overall, I guess my point is um, these guys don't deserve it. Horseback Monument, the old king and his horse have been covered in posters with radical slogans like no kings, no bosses. And again, and once more after that. What? Oh, <laughs> I got to play Disco Elysium on stream. The laptop stickers guy probably works or contracts with the DOD. The only Disco Elysium had the balls to ask hard hitting questions like, what if you were in Quebec and gamers couldn't handle it? <laughs> it just sucks that it'll never be made again. A game like that will never be made again. A, that game will never be made again. The second game will not be that good. I don't have any hope for the fucking actual TV uh, version of it under Amazon Studios, which the inherent irony is also not lost on me, which, you know, that's fine. That is very Disco Elysium to have like a TV show under Amazon Studios. Yeah, well, there I looked into it a lot because there was a point where I genuinely wanted to finance it. Like, no, like... I legitimately saw that like the the studio had been taken over by like VC like vultures predatory uh, uh, VC guys, and I was like, it's so beautiful, it's such a wonderful game, and I know that they're like actually made by commies, you know what I mean? Uh, that I, I I thought I could like help them out, and then I no no that's the separate thing. That's that's the Amazon Studios thing. I was talking about like the studio, the video game studio, yeah. To like ensure that a second one happens or whatever. There's a lot of drama on it, unfortunately. Yeah, and uh, there's a lot of drama that... Uh, there's a lot of drama that happened, basically, surrounding the, the game. And uh, I, don't, I don't think there will be a second one. But anyway... The army is using Helldivers for... Uh, promotions shit is beyond parody capital has the ability to assume all critique critiques into itself even those who critique uh, even those who would critique capital end up reinforcing it instead i disagree to a certain degree with the last part about it that those who critique capital end up being subsumed i think that's like too cynical of an approach This is an unedited picture of the laptop you were looking at. <laughs> uh, 
You said from what you know about the U.S. Green Party, you don't trust them. Please explain. Uh, no, I will not be explaining. The Green Party is great. Please go vote for them. Okay. And in Australia and in America, too. Please stop. Are you going to talk about RFK today? He cucked his campaign. I thought I dreamt this. I'm not kidding. I thought I literally dreamt this in my mind. I don't know why. I don't. I think I was like maybe listening to like Majority Report half awake or something in the morning, and I because it was like 4 a.m. at that point, and I I can't remember if I like dreamt RFK announcing his fucking running mate, and it having being shitty, uh, and not unfortunately not. Uh, what's his face? My goat, Jesse Ventura. Everything is a part of the spectacle society, even everything that critiques it. Yeah. Um, if it was Jesse the body Ventura, I would have voted for RFK Jr. I'm not even kidding on that. I literally would have, uh, I would have voted for him. Aaron Rodgers, I would not have voted for him. But if RFK Jr. brought Jesse the body Ventura, okay, Chris Kyle's actual fucking uh, Merker, like Jesse the body Ventura basically shot Chris Kyle post-mortem, okay? Think about that. American hero, American sniper Chris Kyle lies about beating up Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura launches a successful defamation case against the family, okay? Chris Kyle gets killed by a, another veteran with PTSD that, like, he's going out to shoot guns with, okay? And, and guess what? Jesse Ventura does not drop the fucking court case at all, sues the widow, and is like, that's your family estate. Sorry, sorry, that's your family estate. Your husband should not have lied about fighting Jesse the Body Ventura and defeating him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Turns out, when you lie like that, you're gonna get sued in the courts and... The courts will find Jesse the body and the mind Ventura to be the real winner. Show the clip where he doubles down. Yeah, Jesse body, Jesse body Ventura goes up against uh, a much worse Jesse, Jesse Waters. Um, anyway, I think, uh, what they mean is that basically that guy debord capitulation point, like chase shirts being sold by child labor and all society of the spectacle. Like you said. Yeah. Okay. Um, latest developments of the disco elysium studio drama, by the way, some good quotes in here about management. I don't want to know about anything. I, it just like makes me so sad thinking about it. Cause it's such a beautiful game. You know, let's just, let's just cherish the moments that we did have. RFK fans are not pleased. All right. Okay, we'll we'll cover all of that. Um, let's start with the playlist. Uh, obviously, flying to Australia to meet the Australian wildlife with Boy Boy and I did a thing that's up already uh, on on my second channel, on my secret channel. Go subscribe to the secret channel as well. Um. We are going to talk about the Baltimore bridge collapse right now. Of course, uh, yesterday, midday for us in Australia, uh, while we were shooting the podcast, we got fucking breaking news. And the breaking news was that uh, a bridge in Baltimore had collapsed out of nowhere. And immediately, I personally thought, oh, this must be because our infrastructure is dog shit, right? Turns out, no, it literally is one of those cases where it's a freak accident. Sometimes it happens. You know what I mean? Sometimes it happens. The only aspect of it that is like not so freakish or legitimately a much larger problem is the type of bridge that it is. The type of bridge that it is makes it so that, uh, you know, when it when one part of it collapses, when a support beam collapses, it takes out the entire fucking bridge, which makes the which makes it much more damaging. It is seemingly it is seemingly one of those situations that like literally is a freak accident. <laughs> if that makes sense, because like. Obviously, when I look at that, I think, when I look at that, I think, oh my God, it, like our infrastructure is so bad. Our infrastructure is so fucking bad. It 
it got destroyed so easily. That's not even the case. Streamer monopolizing on news since Hasanabi is on vacation. Not. What? That's actually what. Uh, oh, nah, I'm nah, nah, nah. Say you swear to God, a bridge nah, my life. That's new fear. My nah, life. That's a new fear. Yeah. Hell no. Nah. <sighs> hey, bro. To anyone that was uh, impacted by this, my condolences go out to your families and all that, bro. I'm, I'm genuinely. This is horrible, bro. This is actually one of the worst things I've ever seen. Oh God. I don't know how many people passed away from that, but like, bro, that is. That's crazy. On God, bro. On God. That bridge, on God. Like London. You know what I'm saying? London Bridge is falling down. On God for real, dude. That's crazy. On my life, I've never seen no bridge go like go down like that. If I was there, it would not have gone down like that. I would have saved it. Um <laughs> anyway, listen. Um, so Yes, there is an infrastructural, uh, there is an infrastructural uh, uh, take there, right? Like the type of bridge that they're using, the type of bridge that they make is is uh, unfortunately, uh, it, it, once one support beam goes out in this type of bridge, the entire bridge goes down, as opposed to the concrete bridges where like it's much harder to take down, right? There could have been accident mitigating infrastructure like bollards or columns to prevent the br uh, bridge collapsing. That's true. There are many different things that they could have done. Luckily, it happened at like late at night. And luckily, it didn't happen at rush hour because that would have killed so many more people. Um, but ultimately, I think like people immediately thought maybe it's an act of terror. And then people were like, maybe it's not an act of terror, but like maybe it's actually because there's a black pilot or something, uh, you know, a black captain or DEI. And now conservatives are going off of the DEI angle. They're talking about how Baltimore's mayor is black. It's like, bro, have you seen Baltimore? The fuck? Like they're talking about it like as though it's just because Baltimore is like a, like a predominantly black area that like, you know, the bridge was shit. And I don't know what to say about this issue beyond the fact that like, <sighs> beyond the fact that I told you that they just basically substituted, they just basically fucking substituted the, the uh, you know, the N word with woke. And then they substituted with uh, CRT and now they're substituting it with DEI. They just keep like swapping it. And it's just like, just say the M word, dog. Like, I, I get it. Like, I know what you're trying to say. Conservatives have gotten fucking lazy. One, they've gotten woke and they've gotten too PC because they just don't want to say the N word, right? And secondly, secondly, they've gotten lazy because like DEI, CRT, all of that stuff, is not just a substitute for the N-word. It's a substitute for, like, the N-word variants of, like, whatever the race might be. It's like a pick and choose for non-white, okay? Non-white, non-male. So, like, they got so goddamn lazy that now they don't even, like, find the adequate, like, they don't even do the research to be like, what kind of non-white person am I shitting on? You know what I mean? They just say CRT. They just say DEI. They found like a universal placeholder that's politically fucking correct. One, because they got woke, because they're also they're also gay and Marxist now. That's what happened to the conservatives. And secondly, and secondly, they are lazy as fuck. Back in my day, racists would at least do their due diligence and find the appropriate slur to say to people. Nowadays, they don't even try. They just say woke. Where are the old school racists at? Dusting off the fucking racism tomes, okay? Going in and like doing the reading to find out exactly what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of bigotry we got to do. <laughs> yeah, this guy's a straight up Nazi, by the way. This account is like literally a Nazi. This is Baltimore's DEI mayor. Bro, DEI mayor in Baltimore? It's literally DEI if a white guy is in charge in Baltimore. You understand that, right? Like, it would literally be like a diversity initiative to put a white guy in charge of Baltimore. What the fuck are you saying? DEI. Like, 
They didn't put him there. They voted for him. Bro thinks they, they, they have a corporate structure in Baltimore and they put this guy in charge because he's black. I just know one of the first conservative insane person posts we'll see in the morning about the bridge collapse incident will somehow be related to wokeness or DEI or insane bigotry. It's not even basically is uh, if it's uh, basically a matter of time, but our economy needs more foreign workers. Boom. Dude, what is happening? Like, do they think the bridge was built like by by foreign workers last year or something? Like, DEI is a relatively new phenomena. What the fuck are we talking about? It just doesn't even make sense. That's what's fucking frustrating about this situation is like, like, obviously it's racist, but I'm so used to that, right? So, like, I expect it, and that's like, it's shitty, it's lame, but, like, you're talking about a bridge that was built by your fucking Italian dad, Okay. Yeah, they were the foreign workers at the time, dumb fuck, but they're not the people that you now consider foreign workers. You know what I mean? Unless you are a racist who, like, has gotten in a fucking time machine and went back in time and you're like, we got to cut out this Italian uh, immigration coming into the country. <laughs> like, unless that's your argument for DEI, like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> The bridge is a huge part of the community here. Everyone's life is affected by this bridge. Also, the workers weren't warned, which is wild. I, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it's so fucking stupid. But not only is it fucking stupid, but it also, and I've explained this over and over again, and I see this more so on Twitter than anywhere else. In a world, in a world full of blind people, if you can actually have vision, that's a L for you. Okay? And Twitter is a world full of blind people. Every single one of these motherfuckers are dumb as hell. They're all stupid and they're all fucking racist. So for them, they're like, they're just in their hug box going, dude, we are so right. We are so right about our, this issue here. We're so right about this. Yeah, it is actually like, I'm sure the the ship captain was black. I'm sure the the people on the ship were like non-white. You know, I'm sure that that's why the power went out. I'm sure that the ship company is doing uh, hiring, diverse hiring practices. I'm sure the bridge was built by foreign workers. And it didn't touch American hands. Let me tell you something. Back when we had manufacturing in the United States of America, okay, and I remember the memes from back then, everybody used to talk about how dog shit American manufacturing is. Fuck you mean foreign workers. Like everyone used it. It was a, it was a meta that like, they would always joke that like people at the factories, uh, I must not have worn helmets or whatever the fuck, you know, Ford. Uh, what is it? What's the, what's the Ford one? Fuck. What's the meme about Ford? It, it used to, what, what, what does it stand for? Found on the road dead. And thank you. Exactly. Ford found on the road dead. Every, like, obviously that's improved dramatically over the course of the years, which is ironic because like, that's also, yeah, Ford fix or repair daily. Like, ironically, as America has become more diverse, and this is a correlation, not causation, but like, ironically, as America has become, I guess, more and more diverse, quote unquote diverse, our car manufacturing has improved dramatically, which is pretty funny to think about. <laughs> because, like, back when we did do a lot of manufacturing in this country and there wasn't a lot of DEI or whatever the fuck, like, people knew how shit it was uh, all the time. But it's hilarious to think about because, like, even on the correlation front, it actually, even on the correlation front, it actually doesn't make sense. Obviously, correlation is not causation, but, like, you don't even have a correlation here. Like, more diversity has, uh, in more modern times, more diversity has, like, literally led to, like, or not led to, but more diversity is side-by-side side with, like, better manufacturing capabilities. So... 
It is very fucking stupid. Oh shit. How are you gonna How are you gonna get through this, dude? Yeah. The bridge opened in 1977, and the acting governor at the time was a white guy. So I suppose you could say it's DEI. The government needs to hire less white people. I mean, it is DEI. For Baltimore, if you got a white boy, if you got a white boy in charge in Baltimore, that's DEI. That means like they did a diversity initiative, okay? It's more DEI in that direction. It's the same as like, like Irvine. You know what I mean? You go to Irvine, white, if you got a white guy in charge in Irvine, that's DEI, dog. What the fuck are you doing? You know, how did you get to this position, huh? Tell me. Oh, yeah? Diversity application, right? That's what it is. Like, what are we talking about? Dude, that's not true. DEI is the new acronym they love saying, but can't tell you what it stands for. It's CRT 2.0. Yeah. Yeah, white guy in Atlanta, DEI. <laughs> anyway. Um... Crazy people are trying to act like this kind of incidence is a new and diversity. Descent? This is one of the many examples. The Silver Bridge disaster of 1967. A brief history of documentary. This is in uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia, United States. Uh, it, it was opened in 1928, but designed for the lighter vehicles on the time. I mean, this one is like, this one's a little bit different. IRL, IRL VDM Survivor. What the fuck? 50 tier one gifted subs. What the hell is this? What is VDM? Vehicular death match? What are people saying? The Mothman cometh? RP frogs? Mothman warned us about this bridge. Uh, anyway, Mothman came to warn of the bridge collapse. I don't know what the fuck y'all are talking about. I don't know what y'all are on. Anyway, listen, listen. This person thinks the bridge was blown up on purpose. Dude, I hey, love how fucking insane we've gotten. We've just gotten progressively more and more insane as the years go by, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Here, Let's let Biden talk about how he's going to fucking rebuild the bridge, okay? Before we get to the more insane stuff. I forgot that, like, there's, all, there's also, like, the normal news side of this. So if many of you are unfamiliar with what the fuck's going on here, um, let's first start here. This is a better starting point. Let's talk about, let's talk about uh, Brandon and, and uh, what he had to say, and they'll give you, uh, they'll give you some updates. Yeah, Americans have gotten so fucking insane. It is the most predictable outcome of, like, living the way that we do for as long as we have. We've become an increasingly more violent culture. We uh, have no solutions for any of the answers. So people are, like, desperate to find, like, good narratives. You know what I mean? So immediately people hit the terrorism note. People hit the fucking, like, oh, it must be, like, gay black people building the bridge. Uh, like, a different form of bigotry. And, um, but before we get to that, I should probably cover it, uh, you know, the normal aspect of it, like what actually happened, what the administration is saying they want to do. Okay, here. Before I leave for North Carolina, which I'm going to do in a few minutes, I want to speak briefly about the terrible incident and accident that happened in Baltimore this morning. At about 1.30, container ship struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge, which I've been over many, many times commuting from the state of Delaware on a trainer by car been in Baltimore Harbor many times. And uh, the bridge collapsed, sending several people in the vehicles into the water, into the river. And uh, multiple U.S. Coast Guard units, which are stationed very nearby, thank God, were immediately deployed along with local emergency personnel. And the Coast Guard is leading the response to the port, where representatives from the Federal Highway Administration, the FBI, the Department of Transportation, the Army Corps of Engineers, as well as Maryland officials and Baltimore police and fire are all working together to coordinate an emergency response. Officials at the scene estimate eight people were unaccounted for still, not still, were unaccounted for. That number might change. Two have been rescued. 
one without injury, one in critical condition. And the search and rescue operation is continuing for all those remaining as we speak. I spoke with Governor Moore this morning, as well as the Mayor of Baltimore, the County Executive, the United, to both the United States Senators and the Congressman. And my Secretary of Transportation is on the scene. I told them we're going to send all the federal resources they need as we respond to this emergency. And I mean all the federal resources. And we're going to rebuild that port together. Everything so far indicates that this was a terrible accident. At this time, we have no other indication, no other reason to believe there's any intentional act here. Personnel on board the ship were able to alert the Maryland Department of Transportation that they had lost control of their vessel, as you all know and reported. As a result, local authorities were able to close the bridge to traffic before the bridge was struck, which undoubtedly saved lives. And our prayers are with everyone involved in this terrible accident and all the families, especially those waiting for the news of their loved one right now. I know every minute in that circumstance feels like a lifetime. You just don't know. It's just terrible. We're incredibly grateful for the brave rescuers who immediately rushed to the scene and to the people of Baltimore who want to say, we're with you. We're going to stay with you as long as it takes. And like the governor said, you're Maryland tough, you're Baltimore strong, and we're going to get through this together. And I promise we're not leaving. Here's what's happening now. The search and rescue operation is our top priority. Ship traffic in the Port of Baltimore has been suspended until further notice. And we'll need to clear that channel before the sh ship traffic can resume. The Army Corps of Engineers is on the spot and is going to help lead this effort to clear the channel. The Port of Baltimore is one of the nation's largest shipping hubs. And I've been there a number of times as a senator and as a vice president. It handles a record amount of cargo last year. It's also the top port in America for both imports and exports of automobiles and light trucks. Around 850,000 vehicles go through that port every single year, and we're going to get it up and running again as soon as possible. 15,000 jobs depend on that port, and we're going to do everything we can to protect those jobs and help those workers. The bridge is also critical to, for travel, not just for Baltimore, but for the Northeast Corridor. Over 30,000 vehicles cross the Francis Scott Key Bridge on a daily basis. <clears throat> it's virtually, uh, it's a, well, it's one of the most important elements for the economy in the Northeast and the quality of life. My transportation secretary is there now. As I told Governor Moore, I've directed my team to move heaven and earth to reopen the port and rebuild the bridge as soon as humanly possible. And we're going to work hand in hand with the support of Maryland to support Maryland whatever they ask for. We're going to work with our partners in Congress to make sure the state gets the support it needs. It's my intention that the federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge, and I expect to, the Congress to support my effort. This is going to take some time. The people of Baltimore can count on us, though, to stick with them at every step of the way until the port is reopened and the bridge is rebuilt. You know, we're not leaving until this job gets done not leave until then. So I just want to say God bless everybody who uh, got everyone harmed this morning and their families. Your mother did? What the fuck? That's so funny. Uh, David Simon's going off on these motherfuckers. I keep getting Australian sun safety ads, so be careful, please. Don't forget to slip, slop, and slap. Um, how does Pete excel so much on being the worst transportation secretary? I think honestly, God is punishing him <laughs> and no, I'm not even making like a, like a ironic homophobic joke or something like I just, I think he's just done a lot of bad in his life. <laughs> he killed too many fucking dogs at the shelter. Okay. And now, and now he's getting punished for it. Okay. Because honestly, it is pretty wild how many transportation related disasters have happened under one fucking transportation secretary. It's just like. It's got to be karma. Like, it is pretty crazy. You know what I mean? Like, it is a unique amount of... There are a unique amount of transportation-related incidents in this stolen joke from Chapo. Please tell me that is not what he's fucking... They, they made this joke already. I haven't watched a new Chapo. Did they talk about the Baltimore Bridge?
I couldn't tell you the last transportation secretary or any of the previous ones. I just like, I. No, but they talked about Boeing. Oh, they did. Um, anyway, listen, I, I'm in fucking Australia. I haven't uh, had time to listen to them. But the point is this. The point is this, okay? Any type of transportation that's going on in America is fucked under Pete Buttigieg's watch. It is really fucking crazy. What the hell was that in the window behind you? Um, it's uh, most likely uh, uh, Alex passing by that you saw the shadow of. No, they, they can't see you from the window. I'm looking at it right here. No, they can't see you at all. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Fucking spiders. It's a spider. It's a spider, mate. Um, oh, yes, we can, they're saying. Maybe they can see you. I can't tell. Anyway, regardless, uh, as I was saying, there was a tarantula-looking ass on the wall early when you stood up it went into the plant now okay stop dude it's not even funny oh what the fuck are you guys bro chill fucking chill dude are you going anywhere today yeah i'm actually going to a, a different city today i'm going to melbourne uh in a little bit uh i'm going to melbourne in a little bit uh obviously i'm gonna fly out to melbourne so uh i don't have time to do an irl stream right why are you saying congratulations, bro? It's not like an accomplishment. I'm just going to fucking Melbourne. Um, what time is it there? Uh, it is 2.40 p.m. in Los Angeles. It is 8.39 or 8.40 uh, a.m. here. In, the, uh, in, Sydney, in Sydney. Since you're in Australia, would you be down to cover slash talk about some Australian news? No. <laughs> If you see my sister's ex in Melbourne, tell him he sucks. Okay, let's get back to the news. And may God bless the first responders, many of whom uh -oh. risked their lives. And uh, oh, I got scared. I'm gonna, the reason I'm not going to take a lot of questions. Just don't touch the black the remaining one. Remaining issues that are open, and we got to determine what's going to happen in terms of the, the rescue mission and the like. But I'll. Do you, do you plan to go to Baltimore, sir? And if so, how quickly? I do, and as quickly as I can. That's what we're you said the federal government's also going to pay for the repairs. I'm just curious. This was a ship that appears to be at fault. Is there any reason to believe that the company behind the ship should be held responsible? And then also, you that mentioned could that be, but we're not going to wait for that happen. We're going to pay for it to get the bridge rebuilt and open. What did you make Mr. of President. Israel's decision? It's just crazy because, like, so consistently, there's one thorough line through all of these issues in all of these, like, transportation-related issues, right? And it's not Pete Buttigieg. It is the fact that, like, every single one of these companies is constantly cutting corners, cutting costs, constantly profit-seeking, constantly short-term profit-seeking in the sense that they, they literally do not care. Deregulation comes as well because they lobby the government for said deregulation. And then, like, they don't have the same, they don't have enough security measures on the infrastructure side, on the government side. Then they also implement deregulation. And then, like, you have boats that fucking run out of power. And it's crazy that, like, you see this in every company. It's not like black people running the ship, it's not brown people running the ship. It's that, okay? Capitalism is running the motherfucking ship. And it's making all of these. All of these things worse and worse year over year over year. And yet these dumb fucks can't recognize that. So they have to look and point the finger at their pet project, which is unfortunately for many, just racism, pure, unadulterated, unfiltered racism. That and a lack of safety redundancies. Yep. Turns out if it did have dolphin, dolphins, uh, they were just very... Uh, small and very far away from the peers. Effective. Yeah, save money, save lives. Install dolphins around your bridge piers. Now, the thing is, it can still be an issue. Freak accidents can still happen, okay? Sometimes, and this is the unfortunate reality, sometimes even if you have fucking dolphins... Even if you have the redundancies, it's not going to be a 100%, uh, it's not going to be 100% safe. Like maybe a ship is coming at it way faster than you were supposed to. It's just like a perfect, it's a, 
it's a perfect shitstorm where you basically have uh uh you know you might have like uh, conditions that you might have like a rift and conditions that make it so that the ship is actually going faster than, uh, than it normally would and it runs out of energy or whatever the fuck right it runs out of power and then it goes through the dolphin and still hits the fucking uh bridge i'm a civil engineer the bridge was designed based on 1977 standards and ships have gotten bigger since then this ship was 100 and what 117,000 tons wait what Bridges then and now take impacts into consideration using fenders and around the piers, but nobody's going to agree to pay for the cost of reinforcement against the size of the ship. Yeah. Point is, point is, point is, uh, no matter what happens, like, obviously you can still build the redundancies and they can still not be able to save you. In this circumstance, obviously... There were more safety measures that we could have had that we didn't. Okay? We did not have the safety measures on the infrastructure side. We also have increasingly, as a consequence of trying to fucking make higher profits, we constantly fucking front load all these goddamn ships. The, the, the logistics have gotten out of control. Okay? The logistics have gotten out of control. So these are all factors that contribute to these issues. Okay. Is that a window? Why is it still dark if it's 8 a.m.? It's a dark window. Why are you asking me this question? <laughs> what? It wasn't an accident. It was orchestrated as yet another distraction in a series of distractions on the testimony of Major David Grush. This was a planned demolition. What are you saying, dude? Yeah, dude, they plan to fucking blow up a, a key part of the infrastructure that connects, like, two fucking uh, parts of the uh, of this city. Yeah, they did that on purpose. The worst part of this all, besides the human loss, of course, is going to be jobs, econ uh, economic loss from the people who rely on the port. The bridges used to transport hazmat in and out of the area. Now they must use tunnels for uh, for hazmat, which is not ideal. Uh, every aspect here's the thing okay every aspect of our lives is touched by capitalism every aspect of our lives is impacted by decision makers that cut corners deregulate and and make overall uh like make the process of of your product coming from point a to fucking point b to your door less safe for everyone involved because they're trying to make it as efficient as possible and they're trying to ensure profits uh, are, are as high as possible. So that's it. So every single problem you can point to and even uh, you can point to uh, uh, you can point to the system for every single problem. However, beyond that, shit does happen sometimes. So I do think that this is like one of those instances, right? Like, obviously, um, we like looking at, like, what could have happened if we had, like, proper safety measures, yada, yada, yada. And that's important because those safety measures exist for this fucking reason, right? But ultimately, it, it sometimes it is a, a freak accident. You know what I mean? I managed to find the single most insane take on the situation, by the way. Are you kidding me? It wasn't the David Grush take, the guy that thought that this was an orchestrated attack because of some fucking quack, uh, crackhead uh, UFO conspiracy guy that's like giving testimony on aliens. Yeah, I think, I think that's not the reason. Not even efficient at like getting it to you, efficient for making money off of. It's anti-efficacious. It's complicated for no reason. Yeah, I'm, when I talk about efficiency, I'm talking about like uh, efficiency from the framework of a capitalist. Reasons why the bridge collapsed. Okay. Reasons why the bridge collapsed. 
Stone Toss the Nazi says, foreign workers. Bridge was built in 1977. I don't think that he knows who he is talking about when he says foreign workers. Ironic, because this is, of course, a Puerto Rican Latino Nazi by the name of Hans Graber making this take. He would probably be considered a foreign worker by the metrics of his own kin, you know, his own ideological uh, uh, kinfolk, not skinfolk, I guess. Um, so that's cool. Uh, this guy says Chinese contractorship. It's fucking, we're talking about global shipping. Like, do you know what you are talking about? Point the finger of blame at China for everything then, because guess what? It's, first of all, it's not even Chinese. I'm pretty sure this one is Singaporean. But here, make no mistake. He's racist, but sometimes he could have actually technically called it right. Because we're talking about global shipping. Of course, hella fucking global shipping is like, is it, it, just completely controlled by by uh, Chinese companies okay I do like that I do like that we are now making the whole like um we're basically now doing the meme that I uh, that I uh, breath life in breathed breathed the meme of what kind of Chinese are you is now a reality okay this is like very real Senator, the ship was Singaporean. Yeah. Yeah, it's Singaporean. It's a different kind of Chinese. Is basically now what is happening. Okay? I'm not giving this guy any, like, uh, props here. I don't think he, uh, you know, I don't think he, like, thought about it too much. He just immediately was like, it must be Chinese. This is the same argument for that lady who complained about the airport being filled with immigrants. Yeah, exactly. Um, Baltimore Bridge is 1.6 miles long. This is the moment it collapsed after a cargo ship struck it early in the hours of this morning. Lockdown. Yeah, critical infrastructure, and I, I'm one of these people that believes we've never fully come out of all the lockdowns and the and the COVID issues. You know, you know, as I said, you look at our critical infrastructure, and I, I'm one of these people that believes we've never fully come out of all the lockdowns and the and the COVID issues. You know, as I said, you look at our critical infrastructure, and I, I'm one of these people that believes we. The bridge had a vaccine injury. Like, what's what's happening? John Guandolo says my initial assessment of the bridge collapse due to the main support column being struck by a ship in Baltimore is that it is more likely than not intentional. I worked several Al Qaeda, Hamas cases while in the FBI, and since. And found, verified by state intel agencies, Al-Qaeda and Hamas targeted key bridges to shut down exfil abilities so they could conduct significant level follow-on attacks. <laughs> this may be that, or this may be an accident. I lean strongly towards not an accident. The, the fact that FBI slash Department of Homeland Security says it is not terrorism is a key indicator that it is. Uh, FBI slash Department of Homeland Security have been wrong 100% of the time. They initially say it's not terrorism. Fort Hood, Orlando, Fort Lauderdale, uh, Lakewood, Texas. This guy, wait, did this guy work for the FBI for real? Isn't it weird that it happened after the Moscow attack? No. Because the Moscow attack is an act of terror like a deliberate act of terrorism. This is not. What the fuck are we talking about? Like, guys, sometimes things do happen and it's not immediately like a part of a grand scheme unless the grand narrative that we're talking about is literally capitalism and its inclination towards deregulation and, and constant profit-seeking initiatives that basically make it less safe for transportation, for logistics, and, and uh, make, the, make our, our key infrastructures also uh, less safe as well. Not ready for the, the 
uh, how, how large, how big our cargo ships are nowadays. You know what I mean? As far as like grand narratives uh, that goes, like sometimes a fucking, you know, sometimes shit happens. Sometimes a car accident occurs. You can look at it seriously. You can look at it and analyze it from the framework of like, well, maybe it's, uh, maybe we should have uh, less car reliant infrastructure. Maybe we should have better uh, restrictions uh, on, on uh, maybe we should try and ensure that there are less fatal incidents occurring on the road, right? But we're not doing that because, uh, you know, we're, we're too busy making profits or whatever. Um, but people look at that, people look at something as like normal as like a car accident nowadays and go, oh, it must be that the driver was like black. You know what I mean? This course is driven by the most mentally ill. It is not driven by ideology. No, no, this is ideology. This kind of mental illness is a manifestation of uh, ideology. For sure. This kind of mental illness only happens with ideology. Part of this is anti-materialist thinking. Part of this comes from not being able to accurately look at the situation and recognize the structures that we exist under and why things are happening in the way that they're happening. This is a very predictable outcome. If you are, like not directly this, uh, you know, Baltimore Bridge is going to fucking blow up or whatever, but it's a relatively predictable outcome that... Our infrastructure is pretty bad. It doesn't have the adequate safety measures in place. And like, you know, things like this are probably going to happen. You're probably going to see, and this is not a, it is not going to be an act of terror, but you're probably going to see more bridges collapsing in the United States of America in the next five to 10 years. Is it because I'm somehow like Confucius or not Confucius? Sorry. Uh, is it because I can see the future? Am I clairvoyant? No. I'm not clairvoyant. I just know that we have a lot of F-graded, eroding infrastructure that a shit ton of very heavy, increasingly more heavy fucking trucks are passing over. And I was saying confused, but I, was, I meant Nostradamus. So, like, that's it. That's it. It's not Hassan Al-Ghaib. It's just our infrastructure is crumbling. We know that it's bad. We are basically resting on the laurels of the New Deal. Uh, and, and it's all shit that we built in like the 1930s, right? And we barely have upgraded this stuff. There are ratings uh, on this stuff. Like there, there's a way to like go through and look at the safety measures and see if it's adequate. And America consistently is considered inadequate and getting worse and worse. So it is not that crazy of a stretch or that wild of a take to suspect that like we will see more bridge collapses in the future. This is the maritime version of that bridge collapse, right? Not having enough safety boundaries in place uh, to withstand larger impact from bigger cargo ships consistently uh consistently filling our cargo ships up to the fucking brim the the uh, logistics companies not listening to safety concerns that are coming from within refusing to reckon with that because that's unfortunately too costly and ultimately you arrive at this powder keg this perfect uh this this perfect chaotic situation but why do we have such conspiratorial thinking i said it's ideology right it's because people don't want to think about that grand design. That's complicated. That's not like fun. It's not easy to understand. It's much easier to be like, oh, Jews did this. It's much easier to be like, oh, Hamas did this. Uh, they must have done this, right? Because it's, it's, way, it's way simpler to think in black and white terms and think that there are just like purely evil people that want to do evil. They want to do bad things. And they want to do bad things to us because we're good and they're jealous of our goodness. And that is basically at the heart of liberalism, which everyone is. Many, almost every single person you know in this liberal monoculture is to some degree shaped by liberalism and their understanding of the world. And liberalism demands black and white thinking, good and bad, right? People, some people are good, some people are bad. Uh, it, it's not like a, a completely uh, a, a product of their social conditioning, but instead because they're just like inherently good or inherently evil. So then 
that is how you arrive at this like fascist ideological conspiratorial thinking because you're like well who's the most evil right now hamas duh or who's the most evil right now jews so then they come up with these grand narrative who's the most evil right now china by way of the singaporean chinese and that is why these guys uh, arrive at these fucking insane conclusions. And I mean, it's fun to watch. It's hilarious, right? It's a, it's a choose your own adventure. But it is kind of scary that American politics is a collection of the most unimaginably mentally ill takes now. Like very, very little reasonable discourse occurs. It's almost always just like, Nah, it's got to be some other, uh, you know, it's got to be some crazy conspiracy. Here's a site tracking how shit U.S. bridges are. Over 45,000 are considered structurally deficient. One in three U.S. bridges needs a repair or replacement. That's nice, man. In the state rankings, in a percentage of structurally deficient bridges, West Virginia is the number one state. Iowa, number two, South Dakota, number three, Rhode Island, number four, Maine, number five, Pennsylvania, number six, Puerto Rico, number seven. Now, this, this issue that we're talking about right here is the same problem, but, you know, a different variant of the same problem. It comes from the same place. It's a different variant of it, though, because you're going to be like, oh, Hassan, what do you mean? These are like, uh, these bridges are in a state of disrepair. The Baltimore Bridge was fine. Uh, the Baltimore Bridge wasn't in a, in, a, in a bad condition or in a state of disrepair. And it's like, no, the Baltimore Bridge did not have adequate safety measures placed for uh, the, the consistent ships that were going through it. That much is obvious. Right? John Guandola worked for the FBI, but you will never guess who we work for. I'm not clicking on any of your links, dude. Especially not at the top of the hour because I know, I know it's going to be bait, okay? There is 0% chance there's anything but a top of the hour ad break. Yep, there you go. I called it. You ain't slick, okay? You ain't slick, chatters. You're not slick. I'm the one who knocks. I'm the one who serves you the three-minute ad break at the top of the hour, and I'm the one who tells you if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. I cannot believe you were ready before me. But I know. I know, but it's, like, crazy to me that you you got ready before me. I feel I feel indecent almost. We, we, what time do we have to leave? Yeah. Okay. Uh, shouldn't it be bottom of the hour, Dan and Ozzy? You're right. The new Iran crowds are so horny today. Please watch this. It basically predicted the entire right-wing narrative before it even happened. Hold on. We'll get to that. Let's finish the right-wing narrative, and then we'll watch that video. I have it ready to go on the docket, baby. Don't you worry about a thing. I want to cover this shit, and I'm going to cover the PDD stuff before I have to leave. Uh, to fly out, mate. Flying over the fucking outback, mate. Whoa. Please work on that accent. I think my accent's getting better. I thought it was stupid to blame poor infrastructure until I saw this tweet. No, of course, it's always a consequence of infrastructure. Notice how the key bridge had no fenders. This is why fenders are so important. The only type of protection in this case was the foundation itself, which was not big enough to... Alter the course of the ship given its concave shape of the hull. Poor design. It's not even poor design. It's more so, it's, it's fine design for when it was built. I'm sure there were better versions of it. But, like, it's fine design, maxed out for the efficiency. But the, the unfortunate problem is that it, it, it's not good enough for, uh, you know, it's not good enough for now. It's, it's a lack of maintenance. It's a lack of upgrades, okay? You need infrastructure upgrades. Infrastructure upgrades are good. It's good for the economy. It's a job machine, okay? It's good because it makes things more safe. A lot of the issues that we experience in the United States of America are a consequence of our infrastructure never being fucking updated. That's why I always say we are resting on the laurels of the New Deal. New Deal era infrastructure 
is what America is still running on. Okay? And that shit is not going to fucking work with technological improvements, with, with logistics changing dramatically. Okay? <laughs> That's the problem. You can... You can have the same skeleton. In some instances, you need to improve that as well, especially with, like, you know, car travel changing as well, especially with, like, the, um, you know, how much more traffic is on the bridge, for example, at any given moment. You might need to even change the bridge itself. However, in many instances, even if you don't change the bridge, you at least have to maintain it, and you at least have to add additional safety measures around the fucking bridge. But we don't do that. Because that's gay and lame and woke and, and fucking Marxist, I guess. And, uh, you know, the reality is that uh, we can't do that, honestly. We just, we shouldn't do that. We mustn't do that. The power lines around the bridge had fenders, but the main bridge didn't. What's crazy is you can see the power lines going across the harbor have fenders around them. Thought that after the Sunshine Skyway collapsed in 1980 that all bridges and major ports would have this protection. That's a wild photo. Almost gives the impression that they came, care more about the two-mile stretch of power lines than a bridge that is crossed by tens of millions of people each year. Power lines were likely new construction under stricture regs for fender design criteria. Any new or retrofit substructure repairs on that bridge would require the installation of new fenders since it's a federally navigable waterway. Cargo ship that hit Baltimore Bridge was involved in the Antwerp collision in 2016. So notice how, look, I didn't know enough about this. I read a little bit about it, but you don't need to know too much to recognize that like, here are the most likely scenarios. It's probably the, the, uh, the ship company refusing to do the regular safety checks that they had to implement. Okay, and cutting fucking corners. It's the ship company slamming the ships, as many of these, uh, uh, as many of these companies do nowadays, like stacking it. Okay, it's also a lack of infrastructural safety measures that you normally would have to implement as by law, right? Because it's like an old ass fucking, uh, it's an old ass bridge, so they never did it, and all of that fucking stacks up all of those problems stack up and you create a fucking powder keg you create a powder keg hassan been three days in australia already getting big uh, the only thing getting big is my dick in your mother's pussy okay suck my cock dumb fuck Anyway, your dick can get big in my pussy. Okay, dude, chill. Chill, everybody. I thought you just meant you had a tan. No, he said big. Are you saying fat? Anyway. Um, let's finish the, the, uh, let's, let's keep going through the right wing, uh, mysteries. The ship that struck the FSK bridge mysteriously lost electrical power. NATO dreams about collapsing the Crimean bridge. Did Russia just demonstrate its capability to bring down a bridge without explosions? Was the ship disabled by a directed energy weapon? Awesome. Breaking. A ship just collided with the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, causing it to collapse with multiple motorists reported missing. Maybe instead of sending billions to Ukraine, we should be send spending it on our... Okay, this one is not that bad, though. Like, I don't know why the guy... I know it's CJ Pearson, who's like a fucking right-wing shithead, but, like, this argument is not wrong, okay? Yes, we absolutely... And it's not just Ukraine. We absolutely should be spending money on our infrastructure instead of spending it on war. So I don't know why he... In a sea of good takes... He chose the one fucking Republican who is like accidentally arriving at a good take here. Okay. Just saying.
This is a big fucking ship. You don't fund your way out of this collapse. Hassan, come on. Wait, what do you mean? We just talked about fucking fenders for like the past hour, man. What do you mean? No, there are safety measures that you have literally implemented in that same photo. You, we just looked at it. The, the photo itself perfectly demonstrated. This photo right here perfectly demonstrates the problem. Newer infrastructure that was built with power lines literally have these things around them. Do you see these things? Okay. Do you know what those things are? Those things are basically the same things that separate you from vehicular manslaughter when you're walking on fucking, when you're walking in like, you know, uh, crowded areas. Okay. You got bumpers. Why did they put bumpers on there? The ship is big as fuck. And it's still for the record, the ship is big as fuck. And it still probably could have pushed through those bumpers anyway, because it's not just, it's not, like I said, it is not just the bumpers. It's not one thing. It is the entire thing coming together and perfectly creating this chaotic situation. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because any kind of safety measure in that situation is not a guarantee that will stop the ship in its entirety. Look how big that fucking ship is, right? The point is, the point is, it's supposed to relieve some of the tension so the fucking the the the the foundation isn't eating the brunt of the force and therefore it doesn't collapse in its entirety redundancies and risk mitigation is not done to 100% solve the problem okay sometimes taking away 70% of the force plays a significant role in Avoiding further casualties. Chatters are like, how come this really thin bridge couldn't stop this unstoppable force? 120k tons of steel. It's just... It just sucks, man. It just sucks across the board. Like, because when all, all things considered, all things considered, look, I'm not a fucking maritime expert at all. I'm not a fucking engineer, but I'm a normal dude. And when I see a ship that fucking big, okay, go into what looks like, like melted cheese, basically, uh, in comparison to that fucking fat ass ship, I think... I don't know if any amount of fenders would have actually stopped the brunt of this impact. It could have still actually completely collapsed the bridge, even if it did have the safety measures. Because it's not just one problem here. It's a collection. It is a, it is a multitude of problems getting together and creating the perfect issue. Okay? And I, I need to explain... Like, that is something that I'm trying to describe here, which is that, like, that ship getting that fucking slammed with cargo being that heavy is already an issue. Okay. The ship, the ship manufacturer, or not the ship manufacturer, but the ship company, the shipping company refusing to implement safety measures after whistleblowers or after people, uh, uh criticizing, uh, some of the safety measures. That's an issue. It's a collection of all of these problems that creates this, that creates the catastrophe. Okay. I'm a civil engineer. No bumpers would have stopped that shit. Please. I feel like I'm losing a bit of hearing in that nonsense area. Please don't give into it. No, it's. Oh, I was about. I almost <laughs> slapped you in the face. I was going to come up to hug you. All right. Uh.
Okay. I'm a civil engineer. No bumpers to stop that shit, please. I feel like I'm losing a bit of hearing and analysis everywhere. Please don't give into it. No, I'm it's it's not just about it's not just about the fenders. It is not just about like one aspect. My point is it is literally all of it combined. And even then, okay, even then, and I kept mentioning this from the jump, shit still happens sometimes, okay? Do you get it? Like, my point is, even if we had all the safety measures, even if the ship wasn't fucking completely slammed, even if the ship wasn't as heavy, even if they had listened to all of the safety concerns put forward by uh, the people that are working at the company and they actually implemented all the safety measures so the power never ran out, okay? Sometimes shit happens. Like, I'm not, I'm not discounting that at all. This is one of those circumstances where, like, I don't think it's a deliberate by design, like, uh, you know, thing that was, uh, that was put forward. It's not a conspiracy at all. Unless the conspiracy is capitalism, which is a contributing factor to the likelihood of these kinds of incidents occurring. Okay? I did talk about the, uh, the, the I think, the uh, safety regulations that could have been implemented on the infrastructural side a little too much. Now we're going to get into the other side. Now we're going to talk about the ship side of things in a second. Huh. Shipping giant Maersk confirmed that the Dolly ship, operated and managed by Synergy Marine Group, collided with the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Um, Synergy Marine Group promotes DEI in their company. Did anti-white business practices cause the disaster? Funding for Iran. Let's take the money needed for the new Baltimore Bridge from all the dollars we're sending to Iran, period. Let's go. And then last but not least, and of course this was going to happen, this was a given, the wide open border. What is this? Polygon primitive. Since people are continuously missing the point, here's a pretty picture that illustrates the concept. Specific acts. E.g. crew actions for getting a checklist item. Supervision. E.g. pairing two inexperienced pilots together. Preconditions. Fatigue or a noisy radio channel with frequent interruptions. Organizational influences. E.g. airline culture that places a great value on time departure, thereby creating subtle pressure to get through checklists quickly. This is so funny because what you're describing is only one aspect because this exists in every other field as well, in every other side of the conversation. You're using this example. You're using this example for, for, um, in, in, as the, to describe the principle, basically, and how uh, you know, there are holes in every fucking perfectly designed structure. And it's pretty, and it's pretty funny because like, it's ironic that this, this makes up for one component um, but the same principle exists for the entire design. All the bullshit about DEI makes me so upset because it involves often medicine. I'm in med school. My peers who are POC teach me so fucking much. They didn't get the memo that if you're black, you just pass automatically in general. Yeah. Well, that's just racism. Anyway. This is why there's so much need for redundancy and it is incredibly, utterly inefficient. And I, I, and I think it's great that it's inefficient. It's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be efficient. It's not supposed to be profit-seeking. Like, I, I, value, I value safety and, and uh, human beings and their experiences and, and their lives and their livelihoods in, infinitely more than I value profit margins. Uh, and uh, I guess... You know, I'm, I'm woke that way. I guess I'm woke that way. You've been talking a lot about the potential for wrongdoing or potential for foul play given the wide open border. That is why you have been so adamant. Why has the Republicans had such a hard time securing this border? The president says he's not going to take his uh, executive action. You know that. Well, bro, wide open borders. We're talking about international commercial shipping, dude. What the fuck? What do you mean wide open borders? We are talking about international shipping. What the fuck are you saying right now? We, in Baltimore too. Like, what the fuck? Are, oh my God. It's literally the same exact argument as like going 
to the airport and being like, look at all the fucking migrants here. Why are there so many goddamn foreigners in my motherfucking international airport? I'm like, dude, that what are you saying? What is the word that is coming out of your mouth? Do you think that it's like undocumented Guatemalans that are fucking managing the ship? What the fuck? What do you mean? What, what, how can this tie to the fucking border, please? We all have to stand together. We all have to say that, that it takes 60 votes to pass anything in the Senate. And so Republicans have to stand together and say, look, we're not going to do anything else unless we secure the border. You've been talking a lot about the potential. DEI mayor guy exposed. This guy's getting a lot of traction today for calling the black mayor of Baltimore DEI mayor. And I have to inform you that he's a straight up Holocaust denier. Yeah, I mean, of course he is. He's a he's out and about Nazi. I remember him. Um, that's not surprising at all. Of course they're like that. Uh, oh, so we decided for the Diddy Ray, which is a side for the Russian massacre. What dream level are we in now? Oh my God, this guy's hallucinating. I love that we have to deal with people who are hallucinating on a regular fucking basis. Nowadays, everything is just like you are dealing with people who are hallucinating. All right, let's see what this guy had to say. I got to go pee real quick. Did a cargo ship intentionally crash into the key bridge in Baltimore and how is disinformation spreading because of it? Uh, sorry for the background. I'm in Tampa right now. Um, well, you know why I'm here. Let's get started. On March 26th at around 1.30 a.m., a container ship crashed into the Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland. This is the bridge that carries I-695. The bridge collapsed. A few cars were on the bridge. They went into the water and the divers are still looking for people. Video was released of the incident. But this video isn't about the incident. It's about the words, Time-lapse footage of the Baltimore Bridge incident. Notice how the ship at 11 seconds abruptly changes course to slam into the bridge. Now, if you actually watch the time-lapse video, it seems like the ship loses power right around seven seconds into the video. Now, I'm really not up on maritime stuff. Go watch Sal uh, from what's going on with shipping for that. But if all the lights go out on a ship, you might assume that ship has lost power. If that ship is out of power, I would assume it's probably lost maneuvering capabilities. I mean, maybe there's backups, but if a ship loses power seconds before a crash in the intelligence community, this is what we call a clue. Now, I noticed that many of the tweets about this event had the same exact text. Time-lapse footage of the Baltimore Bridge accident. Notice how the ship at 11 sec seconds <coughs> abruptly changes course to slide <coughs> to the bridge. I also noticed that a lot of the accounts using this text seem to have Indian names. And I think this guy called you an unqualified commie when he talked to Mr. Borelli. I don't know who the fuck this guy is. And I love him. I love him already. He's this guy is, is great. So great. Uh, no, it's just, it was, it's messed up. Hassan said he heard about the bridge yesterday while recording and he didn't warn anyone. Yeah, it's true. I, I am in Australia. So I did see it ahead of time before anyone else did. And, and I didn't even let everybody know to not go on the bridge. I'm sorry. He's a massive Zionist OSINT guy. Yeah, that's uh, not shocking to me. I figured out why, but I'm going to get to that. So I loaded the phrase at 11 seconds, abruptly changed course into Syabra. Which I can't watch a fucking dude, uh, like hallucinate like this, man. I, I just can't do it. I can't do it here. Uh, this is the Nazi guy. He said the Baltimore mayor is black and therefore this is DEI. And that is the reason why a, uh, you know, an international ship uh, crashed into the bridge in Baltimore um, after losing power. Very suspicious. Imagine being married to an OSINT guy. You don't really have to imagine that alternative because, like, I don't think those guys are married. I don't think they ever actually get married. I don't think you can, like, maintain a relationship with an OSINT guy, like a sexual relationship with an OSINT guy. It's just, like, you become an OSINT guy because you are you know, not fuckable. And the less fuckable you are, the more OSINT you become, I think. 
Unless yeah, OSINT guys with Asian wives. Okay, true. That guy is married and I don't even know how. I don't believe that. I think it's made up. Except for Jerome, uh, Geo Rainbolt. Geo Rainbolt is not an OSINT guy. Why would you say that? That's like saying MHUD is an OSINT guy. That's insane. Um, what's OSINT? OSINT is open source intelligence. OSINT posters are insufferable bastards. I am that or no, MHUD is not an OSINT guy. That's crazy. He's just an insufferable bastard without being an OSINT guy. Um, there are good OSINT guys. Obviously, I have Elint News in here. I talk to him a lot. Uh, obviously, I talk to Evan Hill, uh, who's also great. But Evan, I think, is not an OSINT guy at that point. He's literally, I mean, Eric Toller is good. There are some good ones. But those guys literally get hired by, like, actual outlets. And also, you have to remember, oh, by the way, speaking of which, um, uh, M. Hunt did get uh, partnered on Twitch, my goat. Congratulations. Uh, everyone, this is a unthinkable a tragedy. Uh, we have to, uh, first and foremost, pray for all of those who are impacted, uh, those families, uh, pray for our first responders and thank them. Uh, all of them working together, uh, city, state, local, to make sure that we, uh, everyone. Yeah, it's like, it's definitely this guy who wasn't even fucking alive when the bridge was built, who is responsible for this, um, for the, for the disaster. Seeing an abject tragedy with an as yet unexplained cause, how can I make this racist? If the Titanic cry... <gasps> Oh my God, Juniper said the same joke that I've been making. Wait, I think I literally, did I say this on stream? I literally said this exact same joke. I was like, bro. I said the exact same joke about the Titanic. I was like, fucking DEI, man. That's why it happened. We copied her. Is what I would say if that account was Juniper, but she is not. So who knows? But I think that anonymous accounts uh, pronouns are she, her. I don't know who she is or what is going on there. It seems like an unknown individual on Twitter. Twitter used to be a place to go for breaking news about things like the Baltimore Bridge disaster. Under Elon Musk, it has become the place to go for brand new unhinged conspiracy theories about how diversity made a bridge collapse. <laughs> I've been learning on what happened to your friend slash friendly Jordy's is insane. Yes, it is insane. Ocean people are the ones who watch Reddit investigators accidentally frame someone for the Boston Marathon bombing and thought that was awesome. Yes. Exactly. Did you already see this? Is literally just black equals bad. Let's meet the commissioners for the Port of Baltimore. Starting with Karen, uh, Corinthia, a barber. She knows nothing about ports, but she's a diversity, equity, and inclusion belonging auditor and consultant. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm losing my fucking mind. Diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives are oftentimes simply just marketing. It is to make the company look more presentable and more marketable. If you think that this has a tangible impact on the actual direction of society or the actual direction of the company at all in a meaningful capacity, you are either A, a liberal who looks at that and goes, ooh, this is sick, or B, a fucking dumbass racist. That's it. It all comes down to do you think black people have the capacity to work in positions of power or do you think they are inferior beings? That's literally it. Okay. And liberals look at that and go, no, that's great. Like, it's awesome, wonderful. They are right to say, it's awesome, it's wonderful. There's black people in, in positions of power. That's great, okay? Conservatives look at that and go, no, dog, I'm a racist-ass motherfucker, and I think that that is fucked up. 
That's fucked up as hell. <laughs> as a trans woman, I hate DEI because I don't want to have to be a manager. No, you will manage this corporation and you will like it. <laughs> We should take this opportunity. Um, <laughs> we should be grateful for this opportunity to put the test that Elon's argument that DEI is bad by reading all the evidence in Twitter replies. Yeah, exactly. Elon was so right, dude. The evidence has been presented by this guy who also seems to think that, um, you know, the Holocaust, uh, uh, one, did not actually, or I guess he is not a Holocaust denier, but more so like he said the Holocaust is good. And that uh, we fought the wrong guys. Uh, you know, he's just an out and about. Oh, oh, six million e gorillion. Wonderful. He literally is hitting both of those notes. The Holocaust, he's saying the Holocaust didn't happen, but if it did, it was good. And we should have done more of it, actually. And we, as America, fought the wrong guys. <laughs> yeah, classic. My favorite type of Nazi, the guy who says the Holocaust didn't happen, but if it did happen, we should do more of it, and it was good. Type DEI into Twitter search and bar and click people and look at what comes up first. It genuinely made my draw, jaw drop. Fuck Elon. Wait, hold on. Let me just, like, look up. I don't know if I can do that. Like, I don't know if I can hit, like, the search bar on Twitter. You know what I mean? I'm, like, scared of what it might show. Like, I actually don't know what it's going to... Here, I'm going to go full cam because <laughs> I don't like typing anything into Twitter. Okay? Here. I don't like typing anything into Twitter and because there's so much porn pussy in the bio shit happening. But yeah, the top shit that comes up for me when I typed in DEI... As a search query, it doesn't seem to be porn, luckily. DEI is basically just a stand-in for the N-word now from Philip Lewis. Click people. The fuck? Kamala Harris? So these are the people I follow. And then after the people I follow, the first one that comes in that I don't follow is Kamala Harris. Yeah, I mean, it, it's fine. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I get it. It's a, I think it's like a meme, maybe. I don't fucking know. It doesn't matter. This is irrelevant. Yes, Elon is racist. Um, Ryan Grimm, let me preface this by declaring my total ignorance about what specifically is going on on right-wing Twitter. No idea the proximal trigger for the latest meltdown. But I do have one general observation. You drove all the libs off of Twitter and rejoiced. For now... For now, there were no libs. You welcome back the Pepe frogs and rejoice. For now, there were bountiful frogs. Yet the next morning you wept, for there were no liberals to own. Alas, for you had recreated Truth Social, but with more bots. And so there was nothing left to do but call each other pedos and cancel each other. That's my guess. Yeah, he's not wrong. There is some truth to this. I think there is some very real truth to this that like, a lot of liberals were like, fuck this shit. I mean, dude, I am a Twitter power user. I'm literally one of the most Twitter using people out there. I used it for my job. I still use it for my job. And I took it off my fucking phone because it became unbearable to see the metric ton of unfiltered stupidity and racism that, that was being elevated as though it was the greatest take of all time. Like, it, it, it blew my mind. I was like, I can't deal with this anymore. I don't want to see it, like, all the time. It's hurting my fucking brain. I don't want to see it. It's, it's genuinely, like, it's like mainlining fucking 4chan, 8chan, and, like, Kiwi Farms together. It just sucks. It sucks dick. Twitter is still the best platform for NBA injury updates. Yeah, I'm sure there's still pockets... I'm sure there are still pockets of Twitter that still exist, that is good, that is decent, whatever. Okay? But I'm going to be honest, the internet was always like that. No, dude. No. No. 
it definitely wasn't this bad. It has gotten significantly, noticeably worse. And I say this as someone whose politics didn't change over the course of the past couple of years. My politics have remained the same. My experience on Twitter, on the other hand, like I'm still the same guy. My experience on Twitter, so much worse. Okay? Like, you must not have been on Twitter. Like, Twitter always had a lot of issues. Every social media platform does. Every social media platform has a litany of problems because ultimately, it's user error to a certain degree. And we got a lot of fucking dumbasses in the United States of America in general, okay? A lot of fucking arrogant, stupid dumbasses who think like, no, my opinion is very, very important. Fuck you, okay? It's important. I came up with it. I'm an American. I am rare, I am unique, I am beautiful, and by virtue of me coming up with this opinion, you have to listen to it, uh, because guess what? Me, me, me, me, me. Problem is, problem is, <sighs> god damn, the birds are going crazy right now. I'm hearing like crazy ass birds. And, and that, that created a litany of problems regardless, but now it's like, you get special access if you are like the dumbest person. You get elevated. You get elevated. Your your posts get promoted if you're stupid enough to buy, fucking uh, buy a blue check mark. And then that creates this thing where it's like, well, the really dumb takes are getting elevated. I'm a I'm a big dumbass too. Show you. I just showed a video. If you go back, a, a boat crashed here, but you can see dynamite being let off at every single point. I'm gonna do it again. So you have here. Here, uh, here, here. charges, Typically, boom. You know, uh, vessels uh, hit for the middle. On the copy um, before that, you can the, clearly uh, see it happened six or seven times. I went right down the line showing each uh, and every fire point. That, but uh, my this, point to this uh, video is let's not get distracted. Ignore the fact that he's a crazy Zionist OSINT guy. He's got access to very expensive tools to analyze behavior and he's bang on about this. It's worth watching. Are you talking about the other guy? Didn't he just start off by saying it's not a fucking accident? What are you talking about? This dude is already talking about the misinformation around this. Please check it out. It's important. Oh, you're saying that like... No, he's saying that the... Did a car no, this guy's video, he's saying that the misinformation is coming from bots. Yeah, listen, listen up, big dog. I'm going to tell you right now, okay? I'm sure there are a lot of bots pushing narratives, okay? I, I just got to let you know, there are a lot of fucking real people who believe the bots, okay? Don't you have to leave? Not yet. It's only 9.30. I have to... I'll probably stop. I mean, let me think. I'll probably stop streaming in like an hour. I'm not going to say the time, but I'll probably stop streaming in like an hour. Are the boys not going with you? Um, no, Alex is actually uh, going on a, on a trip on vacation. I don't know if he said where, so I'm not going to mention it. But uh, Alexa is coming with me. I saw 20K likes and 100 plus comments on a racist comment that was made by a bot on IG. <laughs> okay, a lot of people do know where he's going. He said Tokyo. Yes, he's going to the Japans. He's going to the Japans. He's going to demonstrate white boy swag go. In the Japans. I haven't watched the latest fucking Shogun episode because I've been like too busy out here. Um, will you stream after you land in Melbourne? No, not today. Why would I stream again today? I already streamed today. Um, no, I'm not going to stream in Melbourne today, but I will stream in Melbourne, Melbourne tomorrow. Lots of Sekisu in the new ep. Oh, let's go. Lady Mariko, I hope. Oh my God, no spoilers. No spoilers! He says the line. He says the Japans in the new episode. You're going to come to Kiwiland? No. Dude, I feel like New Zealand is also a more, even more watered down uh, version of Australia. And Australia is already watered down enough as is. You know what I mean?
Okay, I'm unsubbing. No, New Zealand is like, from what I understand, everything that's like really cool about Australia that you like, New Zealand also has, and maybe in some instances even better, right? But everything cool about Australia, I don't like. I'm not a nature guy at all. Like, no disrespect at all. But it's like, from what I understand, New Zealand is literally just like, more nature Australia. That's why I said it's watered down Australia as in like less developing, uh, less, less infrastructure and less development Australia. So it's even more fucking nature. New Zealand is the Canada of Australia. Exactly. New Zealand is just for hikers. There's fuck all to do but walk here. Shade for New Zealand. You'll piss off the Aussies too. We stick up for each other. Be careful. Yeah, what? Are, okay, dude. You guys got owned by the fucking emus. Okay, give me a break. Does that not make sense? Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Like, Australia is like really sick for nature. If you like hiking, if you like all the like nature stuff, if you like diving, you're going to love it. New Zealand is even better on that front from what I understand. It's even like fucking more pretty, more nature, more all of that, right? I'm not a fucking hike guy. I'm not a nature guy. I'm a city guy. I like big, developed metropolitan cities. That's why I want to go to fucking China really bad. You know what I mean? Like, so <laughs> New Zealand in, is going in the opposite direction of like what my interests are, if that makes sense. Like, I want more city, less nature. Me going to New Zealand from Australia would be like the exact opposite of what I'm looking for. New Zealand doesn't have poisonous things, though. I, this is true. You, they will do the haka for you if you visit New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, New Zealand is like... Um, New Zealand is very... New Zealand is... Uh, Australia's Canada is such a good take. Because, like, as far as I understand, they at least had, like, some treaties with the indigenous populations as opposed to Australia, which was like, no, we're going to wipe out everybody. Uh, whereas, like, New Zealand was like, we're not going to wipe out everybody. And then they also have, like, um, I mean, it's still, obviously, you know, you can't do a little bit of fucking colonialization without wiping out some of the people. You know what I mean? But it's like, but there is a little bit of that still. Kiwis and Canadians catching strides. The most British looking kid from the Chinese snack shop is in the front row. Oh my God. <clears throat> yeah. New Zealand are, from what I understand, they're more sorry about it. They have a treaty. They have like, um, like a group that goes and, and talks to the, to the indigenous population, like to the, to the natives as well. Like they have like, what is it called? Um, it, there's a term for it. Uh, oh yeah. The Waitangi, uh, tribunal. Right? That's what it is, right? New Zealand panders. Australia says gets fu get fucked. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a, there's like a tribunal, I think, uh, of like representatives that come in and they talk to the, to the tribes and stuff like that. New Zealand is much better about that. As a Canadian, I say this, I, though Canada has made some really good steps the last couple of years. Our current government is very right wing, wants to rework the treaty to not mention race. Yeah. Anyway, Melbourne is some sick trams. You'll love it. Yeah, I, I heard. Anyway, Melbourne has a cool cult. Wait, uh, I heard Melbourne is like very hipster, so it'll, it'll be fun, I think. I don't know. Australia is basically hot Canada. Australia is very sexy. Dude, yesterday, can I just say, um, I don't know if we have any clips from yesterday's stream. I don't know if you guys watched or not, but when, when I went to the fucking beach yesterday, I was in awe, okay? It is fucking insane. Like... I'm not trying to be disrespectful or nothing. I'm not trying to be creepy, but it is shocking how fucking sexy the average Australian is. It fucking freaks me out. 
It is weird, bro. It is weird. I've never been to a beach where I'm like, why is everyone a model? Like, what the fuck was happening here? All the men, all the women, everyone was hot as shit. It was so fucking weird. What is this? Were you the shortest guy there? No, no. I mean, I'm still, still pretty stacked up, okay? But it's just like crazy. It's the criminal DNA. Aren't you from Los Angeles, though? Yeah, but Los Angeles is still in America, and Americans are just, like, not very hot in general and not very fit in general. Um, don't get duped by the snow bunnies, black queens forever, snow bunnies never. <laughs> Does this ruin your theory about only hot Aussies being allowed to travel? I mean, I think... I think that there are probably people out there... Also, I think this one hot enough. Alright, I'll just go with that. Oh, the scent. Yeah, it does yeah. not smell. Well, it smells. Oh, that's what I thought it was mine. Okay, cool. No, it's your pocket again. Oh, my it God. Like dead fish. Dude, I was, I, I literally was like a fucking fish. Like, I felt like a fish. That shit was crazy. That thing was so tight on me. It was crazy. My favorite moment from yesterday, flexing on her ass as soon as she talks about the buff kangaroo. We like had red. one called Bruce, and he was bigger than me, and he was, like, on steroids. Like, he was huge. <laughs> I was scared of him. Really? But he was really sweet. Him and the other kangaroo, sorry, the big I'm male. Um, I wasn't flexing on her. I was noticing how fucking hot it was, and I was like, I might as well just, like, get a little bit of tan. So I was really trying to pull my fucking sleeves up so I can get, like, a little bit more sunlight on my pasty ass arms, dude. It was Bruce and... You guys are so dumb. You literally think like every interaction I have uh, with a woman is like me trying to fuck them or something. Like, I was not even, you know, that was not the case at all. I was not trying to like riz her up. <laughs> I have not forgotten the other name, but they used to spoon each other. Oh, that's so yeah, they were really cute. Oh, they're gay? Yeah, one day they, they turned... Oh, we know, like had one... Bro, we were so tired of you for her. You preach to us all the time to be normal. Yeah, you asked a complete stranger yesterday about the turtle penis and echidna pussy. Care to explain? Practice what you preach. Can I just say, I think it's so valid for me to ask, like, the literal animal professional, the literal animal professional, like, how some of these animals fuck. Because it's so weird. Like, what is the logistics of it? You know what I mean? Like, I, it's just, like, very, it's not that you asked about it. It's how vulgar you were. Yeah, no, I think it's, uh, yeah, I was, I definitely wasn't using like the best language uh, for sure. But like, I, I think that at those questions I was asking were like very valid questions. Like when you see like fucking hedgehogs, they're like, how does this work? You know what I mean? <laughs> she said, Google it. You were talking to her like she's Maya. Yeah. You said the bird had two bad bitches at the same damn time. Yeah. This was my favorite part. A dart or a neck a dart. We taught him wrong as a joke. Oh, we say school shooting um, for like, well, I guess you guys call it like picture day where you go. Oh my God. The camera was moving so much. Dude, that shit was so heavy. Also, let me just say something. When I was there holding the camera, I was re-watching some clips. I did such a good fucking job overall of like maintaining it stable. I think March needs to get his weight up. I realized like March needs to get his fucking weight up, dog. Straight up. He fucking, when I rewatch parts where he's holding the camera, is shaking. Skinny ass March. You did because as soon as Alexa got the camera, it was like an earthquake. Yeah, I think people don't understand how heavy this camera is. I'm using it currently. Um, it, you require a lot of grip strength. Like it, it just like it has to be. You have it's like a constant workout, honestly. But the reason why it's like shaking all over the place is because in the car it was crazy. It was like impossible to hold on. Go there and they like. They take photos like the clock. I thought so. you were making a joke. I no, swear no, no, no. to God, I get it. I understand what you're saying. Like, actually, picture day, you, you, you, you, you school, school shooting. shooting. 
in America, when you say that, yeah, yeah. everyone gets very scared uh, because it happens once a week. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, it's less frequent. It's like you get dressed up nice. Yeah, you get, yeah, get your haircut yeah, yeah. the day before. Shoot. I can't Do you tell guys you have vaccination days in school? No, but we have penis inspection day. No, that's <laughs> Actually, awesome. uh, in Ohio. We just have that with PE teachers in our school. Bro, you just need a gimbal, not a gooner grip? Yeah, dude, I know. I know, I just need a gimbal, except here's the problem. Gimbal means additional weight. Gimbal means additional battery. Gimbal means additional space in the bag. You're forgetting that like, I have basically designed all of this entire setup on utility and also on versatility and also speed and efficiency. Which is why I told March, like, we need a different camera. And I think he brought his other camera this time around because I told him, like, we need a, we need a better image stabilizing camera that's, like, I guess not as weighty, not as heavy. Bought a, bought a gimbal is way too fucking heavy for Sony mirrorless. That's what I mean. It's just, like, it's so funny. It, it is funny, though, like, that you guys are talking about, like, gimbals and stuff. Like, dude, I've been doing this for years, okay? I know. I, I've used gimbals in the past. Yeah, gimbals also need their own case. Uh, gimbals also have counterweights that you have to add on. It's just like a whole process. Um, this is the thing you can use or you need a... What is this? Uh, Cam Caddy Scorpion X shoulder support. But again, that's hard to fucking carry around. That's hard to lug around. I don't want that. There are mechanical gyroscope chest attachments that offsets the weight of your core. I know, I know, I know. But you have to remember, like, I, I, I want it to be, like, easy, smooth. I can walk everywhere with it. I can, like, hide it if I want to. When I put it on a fucking chest strap, you become it becomes a fucking cyborg situation. You guys are not understanding the point. The problem is this camera is way too heavy, and its image stabilizing is not that good. Uh, there are better cameras that are l less heavy, that I still have high quality imagery that I need something that's lighter and I need something that has better software, better image stabilization. Okay. That's it. I'm not trying to, I want it to be like easy to just like fling around. You know what I mean? That's it. I already have an action cam, Chatters. I don't use it anymore because honestly, it's kind of dog shit. The quality is dog shit. <laughs> Wait, the action cams are what? The correct terminology is built-in image stabilization. Yeah. Action cams are obviously the best for image stabilization and also they're lightweight. You can fucking fling them around. You can throw them around. Problem is, uh, action cams, their microphones are not as great. We can add a microphone onto this because it's a much better camera. Um, what does Sea Dog use? Sea Dog literally has the most professional. He has moved in the opposite direction of me. I am looking for lightweight. I'm looking for like not a very professional setup. He has created like a very professional setup that requires oftentimes a cameraman. Um, but that's it. Yeah, like Cinemarx is uh it uses like a super professional camera and and uh like a like a like a body mount and stuff to to uh, distribute the weight properly and you know all of that stuff like I don't want to do that. I'm looking for something in between. I'm looking for something in between that is like lightweight enough that isn't uh you know that's lightweight enough that also simultaneously uh is is still decent. All right, let's finish this off. I'm going to go pee again. Holy shit, I'm peeing a lot. attend this meeting this week. Oh, I don't want to get into that. We've got plenty of time to talk about Ross. You mentioned the port. Yeah, the port. Can I ask about cars? About the port. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you,
and the president there addressing the devastating bridge collapse in Baltimore and making news on several fronts. Uh, one saying that the federal government would be there to rebuild this bridge, saying they would move heaven and earth to do that, and that the federal government would pick up the tab for rebuilding that bridge. That's something he said that Congress would have to address. He noted the economic impact, 15,000 jobs uh, impacted here in this area as a result of it. He said, we're sending all the federal resources we need to deal with this massive search and rescue operation that is now underway. He called this a, quote, terrible accident, as officials have ruled out terrorism in this incident. He did say that he would also go to Baltimore. Didn't give a time frame for that, but the president addressing this major incident. Meteorologist Derek Van Dam joins me now. Derek, what does 48-degree water do to a person? Well, frankly, Manu, it's dangerous. Uh, it's very dangerous to be uh, in, included within that type of uh, water temperature, right? So we can see our heart levels rise rapidly. We can start to see our breathing rise rapidly, and uh, we can lose consciousness very quickly. Hypothermia, cold shock sets in. Uh, it is a very dangerous water temperature to uh, be succumbed to. And uh, just zooming in a little bit closer, you can see uh, we've got the Chesapeake Bay to my east and the uh, Patepsco River uh, coming out of the Baltimore Harbor here. And this is right where the uh, key bridge actually collapsed earlier this morning. So we are going on over 12 hours. So when we talk about human survivability within these types of water temperatures, uh, you can see from this graph 40 to 50 degree temperatures, uh, that human survivability limit is roughly one to three hours before those uh, physiological effects that I talked to you about a moment ago start to set in. Now, complicating the efforts not only below the water, but also at the surface of the water and above for the search and rescue operations that are currently ongoing is this tidal swing that we have right now. This is an exaggerated, we have it a full moon spring tide. So we have coastal flood advisories uh, dotting the Chesapeake Bay, the Delmarva Peninsula, for instance. And you can see this wording here, dangerous rip currents. And uh, this is just compounded by the fact that uh, the Patapsco River is flowing out of the Baltimore Harbor Harbor, and we've got the Chesapeake Bay and the Atlantic coastal waters flowing out of this region as we approach low tide at 310 this afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. And then we'll see that reversal in the tides as we head towards a high tide peak later this evening. So that could make conditions. All right. Let's talk about Sean P. Diddy Holmes. Yesterday, while we were on our way to the animal sanctuary, the reptile zoo, Sean P. Diddy Combs' homes were raided, both in Star Island in Florida, in Miami, and also in the Holmby Hills neighborhood, which is the most one of the most expensive real estate neighborhoods in the state of California, in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, his homes were raided. His sons were in the Holmby Hills home. They were, like, handcuffed and stuff. It was crazy. This is, of course, coming on the heels of a sex trafficking investigation into Sean PDD Combs. And uh, we are going to... His sons were just handcuffed. I, I don't think they were arrested, but, like, that's normal. They were, you know... He was not there. He was not at his houses. Apparently, some of the people were tracking his private jet which may or may not have landed outside of the uh, U.S. borders. There are some photos that came out of him potentially pacing around nervously at the Miami private jet terminal right before he allegedly possibly fled the country and went to Antigua. Let's take a look at the story. Now. News tonight, we have some new details about why federal agents may have raided mansions belonging to musician and producer Sean Diddy Combs. CNN's Carlos Suarez is outside of his Miami home for us. So what more do you know about what's behind these searches? Well, Anderson, a law enforcement uh, tells my colleague, a law enforcement source rather tells my colleague, uh, Josh Campbell, that uh, these uh, search warrant activities at both of Combs' homes are related to an ongoing sex trafficking investigation. Yeah. However, I know. the source would not say not. whether Combs is the target of this investigation. We can, we, we have, um, we have some time for sure. We, I, I can go for, I can go for probably another hour, I think. But at the top of the hour, there, I will be serving a three-minute ad break right now. 
Um, of course, if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe chatters for $5 or free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Hopefully that's me. Here is the three-minute ad break now. Okay. Um, watch the bridge analysis vid first. No, we're, we're moving on from the bridge story. I already covered it extensively up and down. Okay. We're talking about Diddy now. Citing the sensitivity of the investigation itself. Now, agents with Homeland Security raided two homes belonging to Combs, one here in Miami Beach, the other in Los Angeles. The property here in Miami Beach is an 11,000 square foot property. And uh, late tonight, we saw agents walking out of this house carrying a cardboard box as well as several bags from the second story of the property out here. Now, agents in Los Angeles could be seen walking around Combs's house there. They were processing the scene there and could be seen uh, taking notes on a table there. Now, an official with Homeland uh, Security here in Miami tells me that uh, the raid that took place here happened a little bit after three o'clock this afternoon. And a neighbor tells me that about 30 to 40 law enforcement officers uh, showed up to the house out here and carried out this search warrant. Uh, again, Anderson, late word tonight uh, from a law enforcement source who tells my colleague uh, Josh Campbell that these search warrants uh, that were executed is in connection with a sex trafficking investigation. However, the source would not say whether Combs himself is the target of the investigation. And, and has Anderson, Sean Combs commented on the searches? Yeah, so we have reached out to... <laughs> who could it be? It must be a coincidence that they just happened to raid both of his... They just it, It's a real strange coincidence they happened to raid both of his homes. You know what I mean? It's just... They're, they're looking for another guy, guys. Okay, listen, make no mistake... The fact that he's not there and we don't know where the fuck he is also also shouldn't be confusing or uh, lead to any additional speculation. Who knows, you know? Hey, Sean, come back. We're looking for another guy. Yeah. To Wait, what? It wouldn't be a sex trafficking story without the British royals involved in some way? Court paper names Duke of Sussex as an example of a well-known figure whom the defendants might have had access to. Are you fucking joking? Prince Harry named the Sean Diddy Combs sexual assault lawsuit? Dude. Bro. Bro. Bro. What the fuck, bro? Bro. How? How? How? What? Oh, my God. It's like the royals find themselves mentioned. I mean, in, in some capacity, I'm sure it's, it's not like a Prince Andrew situation. I'm sure it's not like that. <laughs> There's an interview where P. Diddy said Harry and Meghan were never at any parties. Uh, of Combs. However, we have not heard back. Again, all of this played out uh, here at around 3 o'clock this afternoon. Almost it's clickbait. They're just saying he had clout because he knew him. Oh, that's Immediately, it. we were trying to get some details on exactly uh, what was taking place not only here in Miami and Los Angeles, but as of this late hour, we have not heard from any of Combs' representatives about the raids at either of his properties or the investigation itself. All right, Carlos Suarez, appreciate it. Join me now, CNN legal analyst and criminal defense attorney, Joey Jackson, and the aforementioned Josh Campbell. So Josh, you were part of searches like this when you were an FBI agent. What, what do you read into the, I mean, what stands out to you about this? Well, this is all becoming a little clearer, Anderson, you know, from the moment that we first saw those SWAT vehicles roll up uh, to those homes, as well as mobile command posts, all of those vehicles emblazoned with the letters HSI, uh, that was an indication for those in law enforcement that we're likely talking about sex trafficking, because HSI itself is uh, the primary investigative arm of the Department of Homeland Security. They deal with transnational criminal groups, but they also have a robust under, uh, effort underway to go after human traffickers. That involves two prongs, not only to 
rescue victims of human tra trafficking, but also to locate and prosecute those who may be behind the trafficking itself. And again, you know, a source now tells me this is part of an ongoing <laughs> trafficking investigation. Uh, we don't yet know what specifically they were looking for at these residences. We did see on the aerial footage uh, dozens of law enforcement agents that were descending on both of those locations. And so we'll have to wait and see what the search warrant itself actually entailed. But again, this comes after uh, Sean Combs has faced a, a series of legal troubles in the past several months uh, to include one accuser, for example, back in December. This was a, uh, a woman who was uh, 17 years old at the time that she alleged in 2003 that she was sexually assaulted by Combs, saying that uh, she was sex trafficked, that uh, she was subject to gang rape. Of course, Combs himself had denied all of that. And then finally, uh, just last month, a former employee of Combs had alleged uh, in a civil lawsuit uh, that he was forced to uh, work for Combs, forced him to procure and interact with sex workers. And uh, this uh, individual also saying that Sean Combs' son, Justin, was accused of soliciting prostitutes and underage girls to attend uh, various parties and functions. Again, what? the Combses have denied all of that, but all of this now coming in into focus about what the likely uh, key primary target here is of federal law enforcement. That's determined whether uh, the, the extent of any sex traffic that may have occurred in these residences and who may be- There's already many YouTube documentary on Diddy. Yeah, bro. Okay, it's a little bit different uh, when we're talking about like an active Department of Homeland Security investigation into international sex trafficking potentially, okay? Versus a YouTube documentary from some guy who's like, look at P. Diddy being weird around Justin Bieber. Like, I know that- I know that P. Diddy is like, like a lot of people have talked about P. Diddy, but like if this goes a little bit beyond the, the T accounts. You know what I mean? And what I mean by that is like the T accounts might have been correct and might have been there ahead of time before anybody else. But like in many instances, they just also, you know, stack it up with a whole bunch of like weird shit uh, and, and weird. And it's always like almost always like reactionary in nature in the way that they fucking talk about um like why these things are happening oh it's the illuminati like pdd's a part of the illuminati and he's doing like humiliation rituals yada yada yada and he's like gay and it's always almost always homophobic too maybe responsible and so joy joy just from a legal standpoint i would sean combs's attorneys at this hour now be informed about what exactly they were looking for? Not necessarily. I mean, at some point, certainly you're going to want to, if you're the lawyers, assess, do you have a warrant? Is it valid? What specific information underlies that warrant? Where was the probable cause with respect to, to any type of criminality found, right? Who were the sources of that information? At some point, you'll have all of this. Remember that this is still an active and ongoing investigation. As part of discovery, if this does get into something criminal, I would have to presume the U.S. Attorney's Office is involved. We should point out no right? criminal charges have been filed. Not at all, right? This is simply an investigatory step, and at this stage of the investigation, they apparently went to a judge, right, Anderson, and said, look, we have reason to believe that indicia of criminality may lie within these residences. So they show up with a search warrant at these houses, Correct. and whoever's there has to let them in. Correct. I mean, it's a val if it's a valid warrant, it's presumably you have all these law enforcement officials there, you let them in, they search for what they search for, and then there's the other step. That other step being what specifically did you find? What, if any, connection is that to any criminality? You give it to prosecutors and it's taken from there. And are they told what was taken from the house? Yes, there will be a specific list of items that will ultimately- Is it weird that the DHS is doing these raids instead of the FBI? Yes. It's not weird that the DHS is doing these instead of the FBI. It just signals like what the scope of the investigation is. Um. Department of Homeland Security doing it means that it's uh, there's a likelihood that it is like human trafficking or sex trafficking of an international variety. FBI usually does that as well. They they engage in human uh, trafficking uh, cases, but uh, uh, I think like I think they, they will do a collaborative one. But FBI is like if it was almost internally, like if it was like domestic, right? FBI can work on uh, international cases as well. They also do human trafficking and all the other stuff. But I think that uh, the DHS participating in the raid, or not the, yeah, Homeland Security participating in the raid means that there's an international component probably, I think. FBI is interstate. If it just stays interstate, then I don't know if it would be like, um, it would be Homeland Security, maybe. 
Almost could you suggest a massive international criminal enterprise? I mean, I think so, but maybe not. I don't know. You don't know what you're set. You don't know what you're talking about and end up saying, I think. Yes. <clears throat> that is what I'm saying. Yes, I am like literally that's how human language works. Like it, it, we don't know the details. What the fuck do you mean? I'm openly admitting that I do not know the details, which is why I am saying I think it could be this. You are repeating that I am speculating and saying you're speculating on this issue. It's like, yeah, dumbass, I am. What do you want me to do? They're used to their favorite debate pedophile confidently stating incorrect things as fact. They expect that instead. I just, I don't get it. Like, I'm openly admitting that I do not know. I do not have all of the details. I do not have all of the details of this situation. I cannot predict the fucking future. So I am speculating and I'm recognizing that I'm speculating. So when I say my understanding is or what I think is going on, um, you know, I'm, I, that comes with the admission that like, I don't know. It's very odd to, you know, yell at me for not being confidently incorrect and instead being unconfident and recognizing my limitations. <laughs> I've been only hanging out here since October, but the amount of brain dead you have in the chat is amazing. YouTube perv is mad right now. Yeah, I don't know. Ultimately be turned over to attorneys if, if it goes that far, which will delineate specifically what we took, what room we took it from, who was the agent or agents who, who secured that information. And then it'll go a step further because there'll be analysis on what items that were taken and what, if anything, in that analysis in a laboratory showed that it was connected to any type of sex trafficking, if any. Right. And from there, there'll be or there won't be a criminal prosecution. Joshua, I mean, when people hear the term sex trafficking, what comes to mind is moving people across borders. I mean, you, that's, I assume that's not what's involved here. If that, yeah, in you know, fact, it's unclear. any of that went on. Yeah, it's unclear about the extent, you know, how, how uh, global this we're, we're talking about. Obviously, with human trafficking, that can be transnational in nature where people are uh, brought in uh, from overseas. Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa. Listen up, big guy. I can't believe you're you're mentioning that like a sex trafficking could be international. Excuse me. Seems like these guys at CNN are doing some really fucked up shit, dude. Why would you say such a crazy thing? But sex trafficking happens all across the United States here domestically uh, from people who are from the United States, particularly young victims uh, who are subjected to, uh, you know, such depravity uh, by individuals. And this, this is why you have agencies like H HSI primarily uh, leading the effort to try to rescue those vic victims in order to hold accountable anyone who uh, may be responsible. But it's something that, you know, it doesn't get a lot of attention, uh, particularly because a lot of these investigations happen behind the scenes. There's another element uh, where oftentimes investigators will try to protect the privacy of victims, obviously for good reason, uh, but it certainly is a very sinister threat that, that uh, HSI continues to investigate coast to coast. We should point out there have been a number of civil lawsuits, I guess, against uh, Sean Combs. Again, no criminal charges, it's really important to point out, have been filed. This was, this was uh, you know, uh, executing two search warrants. Um, is it, Joey, I mean, is it common for, if, if, civil, if there are civil cases, that that would trigger a 
Department of Homeland Security investigation? Not necessarily and not at all. However, if you have civil complaints, right, civil lawsuits relating simply to that, right, the securing of compensation based upon some sexual misconduct that's alleged, that's a civil in nature. In this particular case, apparently authorities evaluated that, and from that, they certainly would have had access to the witnesses underlying those allegations, could have interviewed those witnesses, and could have determined that based upon the civil allegations, there could be criminality that may very well have led to the probable cause, which led to these warrants, which is leading to this criminal investigation. Joe Jackson, thanks very much. Josh Campbell as well. Thank you. Let me tell you that shares in Donald Trump's social media. Yeah, I mean, there's more to the P. Diddy stuff, I think, uh, beyond this, but I was on the jury for a sex trafficking case worked by DHS. Those guys don't fuck around. They're fucking ruthless. Yeah, this is like, guys, this is the one thing that they are supposed to do or anyone in the federal law enforcement agencies are supposed to do and do right. Okay. I don't think anyone, no matter what their framework is, no matter what their ideological framework is, is going to go ahead and say something like, no, they shouldn't actively search for international sex traffickers or sex traffickers that are doing it domestically and, and pedophiles. You know what I mean? This is like the thing. This is the thing that they do, and they do well, and they're supposed to do more of. Um, sometimes it's bastardized, and they utilize these um, these resources to go after like consensual adult sex work, which is not criminal or not supposed to be criminal. But like beyond that, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't have to be the Department of Homeland Security doing this. But, like, some agency is supposed to. Uh, here is Brian Enton, statement from Sean P. Diddy Combs' lawyer. Statement on behalf of Sean Combs. Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military-level forces. Search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by the authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained but spoke to and cooperated with the authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel have been restricted in any way. This unprecedented ambush, paired with an advanced coordinated media presence, leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in a civil lawsuit. There has been no findings of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name says Aaron Dwyer, Diddy's attorney. Now, the thing is, given how the Department of Homeland Security moves, okay, it I don't think it's meritless. Like, I, I, as much as I shit on the federal agencies on a regular basis, as much as I criticize them, <laughs> as much as I criticize them, um, they must have meritless lawsuit that he settled in like a week. Yeah. They must have ultimately seen enough information from the civil litigation. If you recall, that was launched uh, against Diddy like a couple months back that he tried to settle as quietly as he possibly could, which is impossible when you're fucking P Diddy um, that must have uh, triggered law enforcement to at least get search warrants, which again, not meritless, can't be meritless because like, especially in a situation this high profile with a very wealthy person, uh, you're like, the judges are going to look at the evidence presented to offer search warrants, right? This isn't like fucking FISA court. This is not happening behind closed doors and and you know judges are like just signing off in, uh, in in a in another circumstance where they easily would offer search warrants to local police uh, on an active investigation, like in the Breonna Taylor situation, for example, right? For like a no knock warrant, like this is a high profile person, and these are federal law enforcement agencies which means that the, the standard for evidence is probably going to be pretty fucking high. It's similar to the Trump case in some respects, where, like, remember when they raided Mar-a-Lago and everyone was like, whoa, what the fuck? Like, this is meritless. Like, no. 
I don't think, no matter how political the law enforcement agencies might be in this circumstance, like the federal agencies will be in this circumstance, there is there has to be a pretty fucking high bar of evidence to clear for them to have enough for them to at least justify being able to raid his residences to find additional evidence. Like, it's just, they don't, they don't just like sign off on it for bullshit is what I mean. It's a lot of resources being used as you're, you're right. Uh, chatter that said that's a lot of used resources not just for bullshit even though cops do fucking use a lot of resources like they swat randomly and and often and it's bad and it's wrong and i mean it's illegal for a reason but like it still happens but like my point is um there must have been enough in the civil litigation that caused them to go to a federal judge and ask for a search warrant. P. Diddy also simultaneously, I think, like sold to uh, an anonymous person, like his company recently. Is that, I saw that uh, news as well. Someone in the chat is saying it too, but like, let's see. I mean, I, I've only seen it in like blogs and shit. I have not seen it in, um, I have not seen it anywhere else uh so i don't know if it's like correct or not but let me see <laughs> like this is from vibe.com which is respectable uh diddy sells remaining revolt tv stake to anonymous buyer yeah, it's on Billboard as well. It's like, it, you know, these aren't blogs. These are like respectable outlets. Um, according to TMZ, and again, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think TMZ is also a respectable outlet when it comes to breaking this sort of stuff. Um, at least more respectable than like fucking blogs in general. Uh, according to TMZ, his shares were sold for an undisclosed sum, though it will remain black owned. The outlet also details that the new Revolt boss wants to remain anonymous during this time. However, they plan to announce their arrival in the coming weeks. No other details surrounding the sales have been shared. They are respectable but shameless. In some ways, you kind of need that in journalism, honestly. Like, like they do sleaze. They do sleazeball shit, too. Like, sometimes they do it in, in a way where it's like you're violating their privacy. You're doing it in a way where it's like it's gross. It's, it's dehumanizing. But in other instances, it's like... Someone's got to do it. You know what I mean? It's one of those things where I always have this arm's length with TMZ journalism where I'm like, on the one hand, I'm like, sometimes it's really fucking sleazy, but in other times I'm glad that there is a guy out there that is doing it. You know what I mean? This is one of those moments where I'm like, I'm glad that there's a fucking sleazeball that is like actually doing investigative reporting on this kind of shit. Does that make sense? But having said that, I do, it is weird to admit this, but I do think that TMZ has a relatively decent track record uh, as far as like being the first, uh, as far as being the first, TMZ deletes stuff if they get it wrong. Wait, really? I don't, I, I'm sure maybe they, I'm, I'm sure they've gotten shit wrong. It's impossible to always get it right. Tyler Oliveira is on his way there as we speak. Yeah. I investigated P. Diddy's fuck compound. <laughs> What's up, guys? Today, we're going to P. Diddy's Homeby Hills mansion. I'm going to break in, and I'm going to put a, <laughs> put a camera on the face of everybody there. The most, with the most racist thumbnail you've ever seen? Yeah. You're going to go down to your local and slam XXXX with the boys. I will be having my first VB long neck on camera. I almost had it last night and I was like, you know what? I want to film this. A 
I was up early this morning with an international discussion about the federal raid on Sean P. D. Combs' property uh, in from Southern Megan in the Southern Cunef. California area, and she's on with us now on Toronto Today. Megan, thanks for the time. Two properties in Los Angeles and Miami. Why is it only audio? Turning Damn, I'll do the BBC two one. Two properties in Los Angeles and Miami connected to rapper Sean Combs, also known as P. D. D. I've been on slamming Monday by the Department bruise. of Homeland Security. Officials have not specified the reason for the raid. However, there have been also many lawsuits that have accused Mr. Combs of sexual misconduct. His attorneys have previously denied all of the allegations made against him. Ali, I spoke to Megan Cuniff, a legal affairs journalist in the Los Angeles area. I started by asking her to outline what we know so far about those raids. Federal authorities with uh, Homeland Security have executed search warrants at locations in Los Angeles and Miami that are associated with uh, Sean Combs, Diddy, the music mogul, business mogul that got his start as Puff Daddy in the music world. This comes amid uh, heightened uh, attention to Diddy because of lawsuits that have been filed against him about uh, sex, sexual assault allegations, sex trafficking allegations, some really serious allegations that be began back in November with a, a lawsuit that grabbed a lot of attention from his former girlfriend, Cassie, who's a well-known R&B singer. She uh, enlisted a well-known firm, law firm in New York City, and they unveiled a, a serious lawsuit against Diddy that outlined all sorts of abuse that had happened over a number of years. And there were some sex trafficking allegations in there. And there have been subsequent lawsuits, uh, similar lawsuits filed since then. And the question has always been, uh, is, is he facing possible criminal charges? 50 Cent is the true goat. Everybody he's ever beefed either turned out to be a pedo or a Nazi. He's also producing and funding a documentary on the diddler. He's his DK. I'm going to expose you right now. Why are you first testing out your statements in the Discord chat and then coming into the Twitch chat and blasting it off again in the Twitch chat? Why are you A-B testing why are you A-B testing your chat? Your chats. I actually do respect it. I do respect it. We all do that? No, I know. I look at the Discord more. I've been looking at the Discord more. And I see you motherfuckers say the same shit in the Discord chat. And then hop on. It's no different than you A-B testing jokes with us before tweeting. True. Fair. It's like, damn, people are, people are reacting to this one. This got a lot of fucking, a lot of keg W's in the discord. Time to fucking put this in the chat. Time to put this on the map right now. Maybe the streamer will like pull me out. Two different audiences. Yeah, just workshopping it. I respect it. It's a, it's a solid way. It's a solid way to get uh, bangers out onto the stream. I respect it. Can you do this on stream? Yeah, I'm going to do this on stream. If you Neck in a VB long neck. On Bambi and Hoscourt House, I miss the memes. I know, I know. Um... I want to I want to clean up I want to clean up Hoscord a little bit. I feel like Hoscord is is in many respects uh, for all of its faults and failures the heart of the community and I feel like Hoscord needs to have more chill with like normies that go in there and and stop being so goddamn clicky and stop being so fucking annoyingly political and you know uh it's just it is basically like nuking it or napalming it to clear, cleaning it, uh, the Hoscord a little bit. I found your merch while thrifting, thrift shopping today. Yeah, I saw. I think, did you post it on the Hassan Piker uh, subreddit? Offline chat is the heart. Offline chat is literally just Hoscord that. Uh, thought Hoscord was too clicky and and uh, and annoying, and then they made their own little click.
Offline chat is a splinter discord. Yeah, but they're not like a problematic splinter discord. They're not like an annoying, at least now, they're not an, uh, until now. <laughs> but they're also clicky as fuck. Let's be real. What about Hoscord 2? Better Hoscord with crack? I didn't even know. I don't even know. The person you yelled at earlier in Discord was an offliner, Lamau. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, it's like dudes who feel like they have more ownership over the community than anybody else. And it does get annoying. And you guys got to... I want it. I want there to be like one community and not splinters. I've seen offline chat tell you to not go online yet because they want to play more trivia. Yeah, they're fucking memeing. They're not being serious. Anyway, let's finish uh, Megan's uh, take here. Wait, actually, I kind of want to see. Uh, show up at Diddy's house and say, hey, would you mind if we searched the place? They had legal authority to go in there and to get that, especially in federal court, the standard is very high for them to uh, get a search warrant signed by a, a magistrate judge in the Southern District of New York saying, you know, yes, there is reason, lawful reason for you to go onto these private properties and seize these materials. Of course, it being a federal process, we don't have access to that search warrant. I was thinking back to when I worked in Spokane, Washington, and we could just go down to the county courthouse and ask to see the search warrants. It, it doesn't work like that in federal court, but they must have some pretty lengthy affidavit that they've written for a judge supporting this search. And of course, that's where all the details on what's going on here. I mean, who prompted this? What are they looking at? And then really who? Who are the individuals here? Who, who are the possible victims that we're looking at here? Yeah, you know, Megan, um, all along, Diddy has maintained his innocence and denied all of these allegations. Uh, he said in a statement in December, I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. Now, Cassie accused him in her lawsuit. Uh, she alleged years of sexual abuse, including rape. Uh, she said he forced her to have sex with male prostitutes while he filmed them. Another of his accusers was a woman who said the rap producer raped her two decades ago when she was 17. So these are very serious allegations. Diddy has maintained he did none of this. Uh, and so hopefully we'll be hearing from his representatives uh, in response to something like this today. I mean, he is um, as big of a deal as you get there in Hollywood, there in the music industry, there in the rap community as well. And so that's what I'm waiting for. But do you think, to your point and to the Associated Press here, they says, you know, we don't know if Combs is a target of this investigation. Based on what we saw today, uh, you know, we don't want to speculate, but but knowing that they raided two of his residences, is it hard to say that he might not be swept up in this investigation in some form or in some capacity? I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know if it's going to be an indictment or charges against him. But the very fact they, they raided two of his mansions on separate sides of the country, that's a pretty good indication he's going to be involved in this in some capacity. Yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely involved in some capacity, but it's also just a good reminder that there's just so much we we don't know. And, you know, kudos to the Associated Press, where I still uh, always admire their, the lines that they include in any story about how so-and-so's lawyer, you know, we don't know if so-and-so has a lawyer. That's a standard line you see in Associated Press press article because they strive to be fair and I think that's a good reminder that all of this is just speculation right now we we don't know we don't know what this is and he has not been charged with a crime however if you just look at what's been going on all the background the the civil allegations against him I mean something it, it, it's obviously connected to what we've been hearing it's just a matter of you know what it is and why I will yeah. say I I the, the feds do like to operate under the element of surprise. So I think everything that's been going on with this latest lawsuit that was filed against him by Little Rod and uh, Diddy had hired uh, Sean Hawley, who's a well-known criminal defense attorney in LA, and he'd hired uh, an attorney in uh, New York, uh, uh, Bobby. Uh, she, she actually used to defend uh, Jelaine Maxwell. So he'd definitely been hiring some people with uh, criminal defense experience, but I think he was really gearing up for you know a big fight and also a big publicity fight. But I 
do oh. think that this would kind of take knock the wind out of anybody for sure. at least a little bit because like i said i don't think they had any warning on this and the feds do like to operate under the element of surprise that's right and, and it does seem like kind of the floodgates have opened against diddy uh for whatever reason over the last several months here and to your point you know uh, Homeland Security investigator, you know, they don't just show up, uh, you know, in, in the moment. They, they plan these raids so exhaustively in the weeks and months prior. And I want to put this statement up. This is. Diddy's team emailed me their statement. The good news for Diddy is that there is already a proposed class action for him from a guy who got his door kicked in during the during an LA public corruption investigation to the DWP one. The key caveat for class membership is his surveillance cameras must have been disabled during the raid. Aaron Dwyer hasn't been involved in Diddy's civil cases, and his sudden presence as Diddy's lead lawyer, the guy who put his names on the statements, is an indication that Diddy's team understands that this is a big fucking deal. Uh, Dwyer is a LA federal defense guy. I think my Toronto Today interview best nails what's happening with Diddy. He is not charged with a crime, and the feds have no authority to restrict his movement. Their only authority to contact his jet would be if they had a search warrant specifically targeting it. There is really zero info about this investigation in the news, but Diddy's team still complains about advanced coordinated media presence, apparently based on the fact that TV news crews learned about a gigantic raid on a celebrity's mansion and decided to report it. Yeah, dude, if you have fucking military gear in Homeby Hills, one of the most expensive real estate markets in Los Angeles, perhaps the world, it, right, in, in, in a celebrity mega mansion. Because, like, when you do a fucking military raid in the, home, uh, in the Homeby Hills, you're blocking access to, like, famous people. You're blocking access to, like, the, the Hadids going uh, home. You know what I mean? Like... The Hadid family lives there. The fucking Kardashians that used to live there. You know what I mean? Like, that's going to be news. It's going to be in the fucking news, all right? It's, it's a big deal. I saw shots of Ridley Scott. Yeah, that's... There you go. Ridley Scott got stuck and couldn't get home. Yeah, the Piker family lives there. Jesus Christ, the New York Times is doing this again. Israeli hostage says she was sexually assaulted and tortured. I mean, I don't think that's a that's a fake news. Hassan is a buy. Uh, that is like the most credible reporting on uh, a direct sexual assault from a a victim that was a hostage. So uh, I wouldn't discount that as like the New York Times actually doing it again. That one is like, uh, I read uh, pieces of that one. That one is definitely different than the other instances. That is most likely the reason why the UN report said that there was at least some instances of like firsthand uh, uh, evidence on sexual assault uh, that occurred with hostages. If you remember, they basically categorized that as a separate um like they gave that a higher, uh, they gave that a, a like a higher level of credibility for um, uh, sexual assaults happening uh, rather than October seven. So, yeah, it is. It is, of course. It is, of course, yet another uh, testament to how badly New York Times fucked up on their October 7 coverage that like um that that you know credible accusations of sexual assault coming from a direct personal testimony uh it, you know it gets discounted but didn't the New York Times interview people for their original sexual assault story no they they this was a hostage that was uh released the New York Times story came before, I think, her release, or they did not. They did not uh, personally interview this person. Did you see the New York Times article saying that the video from Kibbutz Be'eri cast big doubts on one of the allegations they use in the Screams Without Words article? Yeah, the Screams Without Words article is is dog shit.
Like, especially because they claimed systematic rape uh, directed by Hamas. And it was almost utter, like, entirely discredited. Um, no, I'm moving on from PDD. I'm talking about something else. Um, I'm, I'm talking about... Can you tell me if the idea of hospital rape story was true or not? I don't know. <laughs> the New York Times claims she told them what it was, but agreed not to publish it. There's also the claim that she told the same story to some Israeli doctor shortly after her release. It is obvious that the Israeli regime has been maneuvering the story for a very long time. Okay, well... Um, I, I'm not going to cover that today though. Look, man, I'm honestly pretty conflicted on it. The truth will come out and I agree. We should maintain that any woman should get the benefit of the doubt when it comes to sexual assault until proven otherwise. Yes, absolutely. I'm saying that this new story has, in my opinion, a higher level of credibility than anything else, than any other, uh, accusations or allegations of mass systematic uh, uh, rapes that were conducted. Uh, and as far as the Al-Shifa rapes, I don't know. I haven't looked into that. I've only heard claims. I haven't seen any, uh, I haven't seen any additional information on it. But yes. I have maintained this position from day one that there is, of course, always going to be uh, the unfortunate, the, the very unfortunate <clears throat> circumstance that, like, there is a high likelihood that in, in a, a time of conflict, there's going to be criminal elements. There are going to be bad people that are opportunists that are going to uh, use this chaos to do horrifying, additionally horrifying things. But like I said, I have to read into it a little bit more um, to talk about it because it's a very serious, uh, it's a very serious accusation. But from a cursory glance, what I have read on it is that this is different. There is a higher level, much higher, much more serious accusation made with a much more higher, uh, with a much higher level of credibility. You can't believe anything that comes from the Israeli government. They don't get to be believed automatically because they lie so much. Yes, I, I, I, I don't think that anyone can accuse me of believing the Israeli government unconditionally. Um, there's also a little bit I wanted to talk about with respect to uh, Trump. Donald Trump's media firm went on the stock market after it was uh, it like... I guess like it merged with its own shell company. Um, and uh, Trump is, I think, trying to like make some cash off of this uh, with the IPO. Uh, and uh, his, his media firm has soared in the stock market debut. Company have soared as that company makes its formal debut on the stock market. Shares past $70 each giving the firm a market value of more than $9 billion. Uh, let's get more on this from uh, uh, New York, and we can uh, talk to our North America business correspondent, Michelle uh, Fleur. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, Michelle, he's got a lot of uh, uh, bills, I guess you could say, because of the various legal cases that he's uh, wrapped up in, and also the small matter of a uh, campaign for the White House. Um, so this will be quite a welcome windfall. Someone said... These guys are going to be, these idiots are going to be so mad when the fucking shares drop dramatically. But I think like the fact that it's soaring implies that they're mad to begin with. 
The fact that they love Trump implies that they're mad. They're just going to be more mad, and that was that is going to then make them more racist because their madness does not translate to like any sort of tangible action. Their madness is simply about... Their madness is simply, uh, you know, just general anger and anxiety, and that's why they love Trump. These guys love holding the bag for him, too, because they think that Donald Trump is, is uh, sticking it to all of the vectors that cause them harm in their minds. Oh, but this is pretty fun. Yeah, uh, speaking of Trump collecting cash. Okay, hold on. Here it is. One day after he compared himself to Jesus Christ, Trump is now selling a $60 Trump-endorsed Bible. My man is trying so hard to fucking collect, okay? What can we do? Stand up, speak out, and pray that God will bless America again. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. Pray, get educated, get motivated, and stand with me and the legions of Americans. Ask What's happening with this peak right here? What the fuck? Yo! What is happening with his hair, dude? It, I thought it was AI too at first. It looks like it's, my, it's it looks like AI. Yo, he's out of control, man. This is crazy. It's a collector's item. <laughs> it's a collector's item. <laughs> you don't understand. Asking God to bless our great nation, to bring our great nation back, and to make America great again. I'm proud to partner with Lee in this offering. He's a very special man, both as a talent, but maybe even more so as a human being. He's very, very special. And I think you all should get a copy of God Bless the USA Bible now and help spread our Christian values with others. There you have it. Isn't there something in the Bible about, like, fucking Satan coming as, like, a false prophet or whatever? Like... Don't these Christians read their own fucking Bible? Don't they see the fucking warning signs? What's happening here? You know, a, a, a, a camel getting through the eye of the needle? Rich man's chances of getting into heaven? These motherfuckers don't know their own work, dude. They're just riding. They, they, <laughs> bro, they, they literally just, they're fake fans of the Bible, it feels like. Okay? How are you going to sit here and act like you're a real ride-or-die fan of the Bible and you don't even know five of its top hits? Okay? You don't know five of its greatest hits, dude. It makes no sense. Ozempic added 15 years to him. Are we, we're being parasocial for our boy Trump. I mean, I guess we do that all the time, though. Let's make America pray again. God bless you and God bless the USA. You got to give massive props to Trump to learning how to hold the Bible correctly since this is the last time he held it. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was just he was freestyling on that one. I think he popped off on that one. That was a good way to hold the Bible. Really shows how much he cares about it, too. I think the statistics of Christians that actually read the Bible is really low. I feel like I remember reading that somewhere. The entire point of the Antichrist story in the Bible is that the Antichrist is going to dupe fake Christians, so technically it's not wrong so far. What is this? Trump's parents look like the horror version uh, of those movies where Mike Myers plays every character. Yeah, they are fucked up, dude. Like, if you showed up looking like this on Halloween and told me you were zombie Great Gatsby, I wouldn't even question it. Yeah, there is, like, scientists must study what the fuck happened with this dude's skull, honestly. Like... No memes. Like, obviously, you guys know the only phrenology I do is cop phrenology around these parts. But goddamn, 
what the fuck happened to this dude's skull? He literally has Yakub skull. He is a, this is the foremost child of Yakub. Brother, what the fuck? I've never seen, like, I, like at first I thought to myself, like, this Yakub shit is crazy, right? But then you, you see this guy and you're like, oh my God. Let me see if there's a photo on the Wikipedia page. Nope. Does anyone have the, the Yakub photo? I mean, other than this one that we're looking at, I heard it was removing cancer that gave him his skull shape. It's so funny. I feel like that something happens to rich people where they're just hurt. <laughs> they, they just look like they look like they are an affront to God. Like they did some really horrifying shit that disfigured them dramatically. You know what I mean? Like they look like they're constantly in pain. You know what I mean? It's like it's like one of those one of those like uh, eugenics failures of like those dogs that just look like they can't breathe and they're like, please take me out. Like I am having such a bad time. Like please end my end my torment. You know what I mean? Dot dot dot. You're rich. I love having a conversation about like straight up billionaire real estate developers. Okay, who have done horrifying things, and you can always expect Chad to be like, Well, you know, you're the same. Do you think we are on the same playing field? Like, you think a multi billionaire real estate tycoon is the same as a fucking Twitch streamer? Really? Really? Like, you think I own multiple real estate properties? where I'm like purposely excluding black people from renting my real estate properties, for example. Oh my God, every other photo is, is more gruesome than the last. Homie saw train wrecks and thinks every streamer has gamba money. Honestly, it's funny to say that because even train wrecks, with how much money he claims he has, which is like what? I think he says he has like a B in his bank account now or like $100 million or, you know, maybe more. But even train wrecks and like what he claims he has is nothing in comparison to like these fucking dudes. Okay. It's just like, it's fucking ridiculous. They're not looks maxing. No, they're evil maxing. Why do they look like they've all been exposed to dangerously high levels of radiation? Because they probably have, honestly. <sighs> Lick, lich maxing. Can you play the clip? Oh, this is a great one. This is, again, my godly, my favorite God lover, my favorite Christianity lover, Donald Trump, dude. I mean, this is like getting in the lib territory, making fun of this shit, but like, I do love, oh, oh, here it is. Here it is. Here, this is like, it's even on the same thread. Frequently asked questions. Is this Bible officially endorsed by President Trump? Yes, this is the only Bible endorsed by President Trump, which implies that there were other Bibles that were being sold as endorsed by President Trump, but they were fake. <laughs> and how it's your favorite book. And you said, I think last night in Iowa, some people are surprised that you say that. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favorite Bible uh, verses are. Well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me, that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal. Also, God damn, he has like, he has also withered away a lot. It is kind of crazy because like his performance here, like obviously this is a funny meme, right? Like he's, he's, he's failing to deliver here, but like even in his failure to deliver here, he does seem a lot more coherent 
uh, back then than he is now, I will say. It really fucked him up. Like, the presidency does take away a lot of your... It sucks away a lot of your powers, I think. Oh, here's the... Yaku exactly. Tell me that this is not the same guy. Please, dude. I mean, come on. Bro, bro. Tell me. Hold on. How do I do fucking tabs that I close? Okay, you mentioned the Bible. You've been talking about how it's your favorite book. And you said, I think last night. And I okay, bro. Chatters. Chatters. Wait, fuck. Oh no, I closed it again. Oh no. Where the hell is Dr. Yagub? Here. Chatters. Let's take a look. Tell me that this guy, Dr. Yagub, the inventor of white people, okay, is not just Fred Trump. I mean, seriously. It's literally, Fre Fred Trump is Dr. Yago. I'm convinced now. I'm going to tweet that out. That's funny, I think. When are they releasing white people too? I mean, dude, maybe maybe in the second Trump presidency that we'll finally get we'll finally get uh another white person. A B testing on us? Yes. Yeah, I did that shit. What are you gonna do about it? I haven't watched a new episode of Shogun yet. Watch the tan line. Are you fasting for Ramadan? No, I'm not. Any thoughts on the three body problem opening scene? Not sure if you watched the whole episode, but I remember saying you started it. Netflix's three body problem draws fire in China. Praise from U.S. conservatives. Um, this is a misleading article. Uh, this is a this is one hundred percent a misleading article. Uh, three body problem is a Chinese work of art. Three body problem offers critique of the cultural revolution and the brutality of the cultural revolution. Uh, the cultural revolution is recognized as one of those like officially government recognized like bad things in China and shitting on the cultural revolution is perfectly allowed. And also in my opinion, valid as well. And it was literally in the book. So Hollywood Reporter is like trying to make it seem like uh, the Chinese are very mad about it when, um, you know, the Chinese openly recognize it as a, like it's the official historical position and the official government position that uh, you can shit on the cultural revolution and its failures. So the writer says he wanted it in the first book, but had to put it in the middle. The cultural revolution was perfect. Stop being a revcom neo lib baby. Saying the cultural revolution is a parallel to cancel culture is crazy. I mean, is it though? 
Is it actually crazy? Because, like, cancel culture is what conservatives think. I mean, a cultural revolution is what conservatives think cancel culture is actually doing in the United States of America. But, like, it kind of is. Dude, listen. Even the biggest dick riders of China will watch that scene and go, eh, it's valid. There's truth to this. I think that it, it, did, a, it did a justice. That's my, that's my take on it. Uh, I think the title is definitely clickbait, but the article isn't too biased from what I'm reading. Yeah, the, uh, I think from what I understand, from what I understand, um, the, uh, the, the, obviously it's like a Chinese sci-fi. From what I understand, it's written also by a theoretical physicist in China. So like it actually has like decent science in it. This is what I've heard. Uh, and that, um, and that, you know, they're, they're pretty stoked that like a, a great Chinese, uh, sci-fi is like now making waves in the Western world. But who's currently attacking? This is also a great take. Thank you. Fango lives shocking that he, uh, came in with a, a an extremely rare, but very good take regardless. Uh, who's currently attacking academics and burning books in the U.S.? It's the conservatives. Yes. <laughs> like, if there's one group that is unironically doing something akin to cultural revolution shit, it's not like we haven't reached the public flogging version of this. However, I will say that, like, it is definitely conservatives in this country that are infinitely closer to doing cultural revolution dynamics um, than, than anything else. It's funny though, because it's not like young and, and, uh, and, and, uh, I guess like my grandfather was persecuted by the youth red guards. Cause he was an intellectual, he was an engineer and they shaved his head. Did the, he did the plague stuff after that, uh, blew over the government, gave him money and two apartments as an apology. He remained a communist till he died Two based. Yeah. I do think that it's a little corny. That's my that's my three body problem problem. I think the dialogue is like fucking corned up, dude. And I don't know if it's because it's like hard to translate from uh, Chinese or something. I don't know, but it, it is very it is super corned up, like so fucking corny. And I don't know if that's like because they made it for the West and they made it corny for the West or something, or if it was just like. It was a not a, not a good translation because it does happen sometimes, like with with anime too. But a lot of people love the book, so um, it is also horned up too. Yeah, it's corned up and horned up. Um, characters were more emphasized in this one. The problem is that they made all the Chinese heroes British, but kept the villains Chinese. So now it's a story about the Chinese fucking up the world and the West coming in to save it. I don't know. From the Wikipedia page, Liu argued that democracy was not appropriate for modern China and individual liberty and freedom of governance is not what Chinese people care about, adding, if you were to loosen up the country a bit, the consequences would be terrifying. My goat. My fucking goat, dude. According to a June 2019 interview and profile article by The New Yorker, Liu avoids talking about politics. In the same article, Liu argued that democracy was not appropriate for modern China. My king. My goat. <laughs> If you were to loosen up the country a bit, the consequences would be terrifying. He expressed support of policies such as the one child policy and China's Xinjiang policy, saying, Would you rather that they be hacking away at bodies at train stations and schools and terrorist attacks? If anything, yeah, he's he is a that's the funny part, is that like 
the dude loves his government, okay? Which I feel like you wouldn't be able to write a book like that and and get like massive critical acclaim in China if you weren't like that, you know what I mean? This is pretty funny because like obviously China has its own versions of hogs, right? Like dick riders of the government. And we have it in America as well. It's the same principle. It's the same principle behind like people at Hollywood booing fucking Michael Moore. But from the American sensibilities, they look at like his critiques of the Cultural Revolution, uh, which are in the book, and they don't recognize that like the Chinese government allows that, right? That is like a uh, that is appropriate to say. So they think, oh my God, this guy's like fucking totally like anti-China, right? Like they all love the cultural revolution there. Obviously, duh, they all love Mao. They all love the cultural revolution. And it's not more complicated or nuanced than that. So they forget that like the author, if they knew a little bit, they would recognize that like in order for the author to be able to write a book like this and to have critical acclaim and to be successful in China, he probably is one, only tackling concepts with critique that is like allowed, that is permissible, and two, probably a major dick writer of the Chinese government very publicly, okay? Which shows that this, this interview itself and excerpts from this interview itself shows that he definitely is both of those things. He did both of those things. Um, Mao is there George Washington. Tell me they don't love the Cultural Revolution like Americans love the American Revolution. No, they don't. Mao is there George Washington. But no, they are... I would, I would go so far as to say the official Chinese position on the Cultural Revolution is like infinitely more critical of the official American position on slavery and the participation and facilitation of American founding fathers, including but not limited to George Washington, on slavery. Just saying. You often talk about China is missing soft power and cultural exports. How do you say this is kind of an example of a good cultural export? Eh, because it's still being uh, Western-fied. Uh, it's, it's like Angla, it's anglicized. Is that the right term? I think it is. <sighs> so it's still like they're, the Western world does have a capacity to just like take it and then like reformat it in a way that like suits Western needs and whitewash it. You know what I mean? You know, your camera is pulsing due to autofocus. Is it? Um, The most Chinese people hate the Chinese revolution. The only divide on that is whether the resulting political and economic changes that Deng brought in is a result that was worth it. What are your problems with China? Um, uh, very strict control over civil liberties that I do like that America does offer and can only offer as the hegemonic superpower, of course, but still offers nonetheless. China does not offer that. I don't like that. Um, they are still very authoritarian in the way that they deal with homelessness, in the way that they deal with some of crimes that like they definitely could have a more rehabilitative approach on that they do not. Um, their policies of of of maintaining like cultural and social cohesion and harmony uh, in in areas where there are separatist movements, um, instead of like leading by uh, offering amenities, which they do to a certain respect. They first go in with the stick before they lead with the carrot. Uh, what they did in Xinjiang is, is in, I shouldn't be saying this too much because I do want to go to China soon, but like, I do think that this is a fair critique uh, and that, um, yes, their, their uh, cultural, supp cultural suppression and mass surveillance in Xinjiang is completely unacceptable. Um, I have maintained this position. I have maintained this position with a jump. I don't give a fuck if Wikipedia drops the term genocide from it, right? I still think that, like, I still personally think that these are, like, very real... Uh, there are very real social policies that they have... 
that they've implemented that I think is like very bad. Um, this is the funniest thing because you are literally doing the China hog thing. Like you are being a, a hog, but for China, and not only are you being a hog for China, you're also not even Chinese. So I don't understand this like thing that happens. Like this is the, the version of, this is the, this is the difference in my like DPRK position. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea, okay? The Democratic People's Republic of Korea is, uh, is, is, I wouldn't say thriving, but doing fairly well now as they move away from the worst aspects of the famines, right? Especially in the aftermath of the dissolution of the USSR, which was their lifeline for the longest time. I wouldn't say that, I wouldn't take it further and go, no, actually, DPRK is awesome. They're eating burgers for every meal. There's a difference between saying that like the DPRK was, was forced into um, existing in the way that it does, right? As a consequence of being shut out from global trade and, and really awful policies implemented by empire that literally fucking wiped out almost every city in the Korean War, the Forgotten War, and, and they uh, were barely able to recover from it, uh, which early on they did recover from it fairly well with the help of the USSR, but then uh, had, a, uh, had a very hard time recovering in the 90s, which was like inhumane that we just did not offer them any support, versus DPRK is the beacon of democracy, the shining beacon of democracy, and they're fucking eating burgers every goddamn meal. Okay? The same goes for my opinion on China, which I think is very balanced, which I think is very fair. Of course, as a state, it produces the same exact monopoly of violence that every state produces, and a lot of those policies are inhumane. I would not agree to those policies if America conducted them, so of course I'm not going to agree to those policies when China conducts them. Okay. However, having said that, is it greatly emphasized in an, in an obviously, obviously uh, a hypocritical manner by the West? Of course. The um, one important thing to note is that this talk of China is that it ended the camp shit or prison after six months. Even AP News and other American outlets gone there. So show no signs of camps or anything exists anymore. Yes. I'm not talking about like the present day Xinjiang, I'm talking about the, the uh, mass suppression and mass surveillance and mass imprisonment that occurred in the time frame that it did. Um, there's also other issues with, um, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? This is the most you've criticized China in forever. Australian hogs have nothing, uh, are really rubbing off on you. I think I think China, on the other hand, still presents a, a beacon of prosperity in many respects. It is phenomenally developed uh, with all of the circumstances that I can, like with, with its starting point and where it is now is incredible. It is incredible. I wish that we would look to that and go, fuck, why don't we do that here in the United States of America? Okay? Straight up. I think that our uh, involvement in trying to maintain our hegemonic power in the South China Sea, arming all of our allies in that region, nuclearizing fucking Australia with the with their with the submarines and everything else like that is very is is very stupid. It's unproductive, it's killing us because it just like shifts our efforts and focus onto a new front, a new cold war. It's fucking idiotic. Um not only that, but also on top of that, it is it is a different situation than the Cold War because our trade relations with the USSR were not the same during the Cold War as it is with China now. So we do have a different pathway available for us because China would not have been able to develop as it did without foreign capital flooding into China, without it becoming a manufacturing hub for the world. And therefore, those trade relations exist and have not gone away. And we still rely on China for most of our manufacturing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the USSR was never our largest trade partner. So, like, the, the political dynamic there is very different than the USSR. 
You can look at fifth generation Chinese films that presented many stories and critique of cultural revolution, scar literature. This is literally before Tiananmen Square and even extended after as well. Dude, every every shirt you wear is sick. That's awesome. That's that's a sick shirt. He's wearing the Sinn Fein shirt, but Seinfeld, Seinfeld Sinn Fein. Uh, when people talk about the reduction of poverty around the world over the last 50 years, they don't mention China very often. They often make it seem like it was just the Western capitalism. Yeah. Um, what else? What else was I going to say uh, as far as China goes? <laughs> um, don't you have to leave, bro? Soon, bro. What other faults and failures of China that I miss? Um, oh, they have a really big problem with healthcare too. Um, their healthcare infrastructure has not caught up to uh, other infrastructure projects. Like they're very good at building shit. They're very good at uh, building high speed rail. They're very good at building in general. Um, but as far as their uh, as far as their healthcare infrastructure goes, like it's it's improving, but there's still much uh, that needs to be improved. Um, so, yeah. Another minus, they ban all the Western apps. I mean, that, that part I don't even consider a minus, to be honest. <laughs> Do you think we... Here's the question I have for you. Do you think that's a bad thing? I don't want it. Because I live in America and I do appreciate having like the freedom to look at whatever the fuck I want. But then I look at America and I'm like, damn, maybe it's not the best. <laughs> like I still, I still value it. I value freedom of speech. Of course I do. But then I also think about like Twitter. And like how that works in practice. In uplifting the most reactionary sentiment. And like we literally complained for the past three hours about how people have gotten more insane progressively. And then, and then we're like, well, you know, but the, but the Chinese don't have our apps. <laughs> and it's like, ah. <laughs> you know what I mean? The same could be said about TikTok. Yes. I have said the same thing about TikTok. Do you not understand what I'm saying? Like, China has their own TikTok. It don't have the same shit that we see on TikTok. The difference there, of course, is that like Chinese prosperity over the past couple of decades has also like maintained a shit ton of confidence in the government. A lot of people misunderstand this reality. They think like, oh no, they're just like brutally suppressed. And that's why they can't like, they're lying to like Western pollsters and Western researchers. But like, no man, they see the changes in their fucking immediate life. So they do have a level of confidence that their government is doing the right thing by them that is unimaginable to the Western world. No one in the Western world literally has that same level of trust because why would they? Why should they? Our government works completely against our best interests openly, both privately, but also openly all the fucking time. So, anyway. Like, the closest you can get to that, I think, confidence in the government is probably, like, in the Western world, is probably, like, Scandinavian countries, I would say. Like, there's a lot more social cohesion. And it's funny because, like, they'll say, well, those countries aren't diverse. Well, China is fucking diverse. You know what I mean? Incredibly diverse. so wrong reddit band based no so wrong there's a reason you hear things that are not always favorable about the government but you never hear about corruption or absolute distrust no you do hear about corruption uh yeah you hear about corruption when you hear about like how china executed like a fucking dude that was you know poisoning the water supply or some shit 
My point is you can't get away with like authoritarianism of that sort. And it certainly is authoritarian like you do in China without like uh, a, a base level of trust in government. And that's a scary prospect for a lot of Westerners in general. One, because they cannot identify with that. Like they literally can't even identify with a world in which like they think that the government ha is like doing right by them in general and has their best interests in heart. You know what I mean? No, it's not authoritarian in air quotes. It is authoritarian. It is objectively authoritarian to be like, you can't have these things that you want to have. But all manner of governance is at, at a certain stage authoritarian. I've joked about this before, but it's like, technically, age of consent laws are authoritarian to those who want to fuck minors, okay? It is. Every rule and every regulation inevitably excludes people that want to violate said rules and regulations. <laughs> like... <laughs> This does not mean that it is, like, always bad, okay? <laughs> Sometimes it is good <laughs> to restrict people that want to do things. <laughs> Sorry to all the fucking debate YouTubers, but, like, age of consent, good, okay? I know I'm, I'm being quite controversial here. There are degrees to it. You hear about corruption all the time. There's always stories about some fail son daughter of some government official doing heinous shit and getting scot free. Oh, there I'm sure. Yes, that that too. For sure. That's another uh, you know, permanent problem with all governments. I'm talking like broader. Listen, the the Chinese expats uh in here can can probably attest to this as well that like um of course all all governments have issues. You know, but overall, the one thing you can't fucking fake, the one thing you cannot fake is improvements to the material conditions of the broadest subsect of the population. When you do that, people are going to shut the fuck up and go, you know what? <laughs> Things are pretty good. And there's also an additional understanding of like, an additional social cohesion that you create with like the, the concept of Chinese prosperity, like a government, the government has done right by us. And like, look how great we have become. Look how much of a superpower we have become in such a short period of time. That is another way to reinforce. Uh, that is another way to like positively reinforce uh, uh, social cohesion and, and instill a, a sense of patriotism in you. That patriotism, of course, is never really, like, represented in the Western world because I think a shit ton of Chinese people are just, like, openly, understandably terrified of, like, saying it outwardly because everyone's like, well, you're a spy and you fucking want to kill the Westerners or whatever. But at least this is what I see <clears throat> from my relatives who are fucking Taiwanese even, okay? So, like, that's the other thing. Another thing that a lot of people also fail to recognize, maybe some uh, other Asian populations living in the Western world don't recognize, is that like xenophobia hurts them as well. Because in the eyes of Westerners, like you're all Chinese. You're just Chinese, you're different kind of Chinese. Tom Cotton basically showed that uh, very publicly. You know what I mean? So xenophobia does hurt all, all Asian uh, uh, populations in the Western world. Because everybody goes, yeah, you're fucking Chinese too. Like, nobody's making the distinction between a, a, a Vietnamese person and a Chinese person. Like, that's never... That literally is never happening in the, in the minds of a racist person. So, it, it's, it's funny because, like, you know... Like, non-Muslim Indians in America being, like, extremely fucking anti-Muslim and Islamophobic. Thinking that, like this will somehow absolve them of the sin of broader Islam that is like, um, you know, that they are playing into as well. It's like, nope, racists don't give a shit. They think you're brown and a terrorist. Um, oh, 
Always. I had an idiot keep saying ni hao ma to me, even though I told him I'm not Chinese every time. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Wrong. A pro racist will be able to tell which island of the Philippines you came from. They're like the Terminator for Asians. Okay, you're talking about like... You're talking about like dudes who've done the racist reading though. That's different. That's a, that's a real, that's, <laughs> that's a real racist. Knowing exactly what kind of slur to use at a specific person is like really scary. Okay. Now you're talking about like Olympic level races, like ultra races that are globally competitive races. But anyway, um, I did my, uh, you know, pro China power hour here. As always, I think Vietnam has reason to dislike China for having invaded four times. Not gonna lie, no, I, I, I never said that. Like uh, the Vietnamese uh, anger and resentment towards the Chinese is is coming from like absolutely nothing. I'm not saying that at all. Anyway, um, all right, that'll be all for now because I do have to head out and fly out. And uh, hopefully I got to cover some of the big stories today. But um, I will be back tomorrow from Melbourne. And we will have some Melbourne-related festivities, right? Fucking hell. I'm going to take a shower, get ready, take my gear, put it in a bag. Uh, I will be watching Shogun. I might well just watch it on the flight, actually. God, I fucking, I'm excited. Um, and yes, as always, uh, I will have the classic, I will, of course, have the classic desktop stream, cover some news before I head on out uh, from Melbourne as well. Don't forget it. Don't worry about it. It's going to happen. Love you all, mates. And I'll see you next time I see you. I'll be in fucking Melbourne, mate. Peace. Sunny Los Angeles, California says her song. The starlight to the starlight to the top it just begun.
JCS Reactlor frame is broken, cover blown. A full blown mess, pandemic months are streaming at your home. Total radicalization coming out to find. The system you were taught to trust in was broken the whole time. And all these daily streams, whether big or whether small, have helped me and so many find a meaning.